this is you, good. We need to figure out how to get down to the back rooms. Let's have wait, just tell me how you got out of the back rooms. Let me get out of the back rooms. Let me get out of the back rooms. This is a bridge from PUBG in outside of the back rooms. It's a this is, it's is, that a, is that a back rooms? Wait. Is that back rooms? Are we back? Are we back? Are we going? Phil, who is this dog? I need a game theory to help me out. <gasps> wait, wait, it's the wait, dog wait. from back rooms. Guys, it's the dog from. It's wait, the Phil, guys. have you met Matt Pat? Wait, Phil, Phil, Phil you met Matt Pat? Wait a second, wait a second. Phil, are you a theorist? Who's that guy? <laughs> Wait, Phil, did you? Are you one of the co-writers for Style Theory? Or is that just a theory? Or a food theory? Phil, were you the skull that Look, got Charlie, watching Wait, with Charlie, your have you been watching Style Theory? Wait, no, Phil, Phil.
PH1L, heart. Thank you Crow Father for all the love and good times, 4 months go burr, and I hope all goes well during stream PH1L. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> oh, it's Wednesday! <laughs> it's it's potential art stream. I mean, I got I got my pad, so we might we might be doing art. We might be doing a doodle or two. Are we good? Are we pog? Are we pog? <laughs> <laughs> Jump scare, it's your streamer. Hello. <laughs> Alright, sweet. So this is a sub goal. We hit like fucking 14k. Sorry, 13k. Thank you for the one year. We're doing Pog, thank you. We had 13k the other day. New sub goal is 14,000, but don't expect to hit that. It's just there because people will be like, Oh, we hit the sub goal! Oh, we hit the sub goal! Change it! So I just changed it just to, you know, quell the screams. I just, I don't expect to hit that one, so it's fine. Don't worry. Yes! Bam, bam, bam. Bing, bing, bing. You know what's funny? What's funny about that is um, I actually enjoyed the game part of that episode better. And I can explain it without spoiling. The end of the latest episode ends slightly differently than the game part does. I like the game part more because it like fades out. There's like something really crazy happening and the like audio fades out and it goes quiet and then music plays and it's like it hits way harder. Thank you for the 20 gifted, thank you! Holy shit, thank you so much man, thank you. Matt Compass, thanks mate. Music is too loud, it's always loud at the beginning. Hush, hush your quells, hush, hush. We turn it down, there we go. <laughs> It's always just loud and hype at the start, so I shout a lot, all right? Anyway, that's not the song. I didn't have shuffle switched on. 23 months. There we go. One more and I'll have two years. Love e. supporting you and Mumza. Ah, I hear myself. Ah. <laughs> I can't stay along, almighty oh father. Hope stream oh. goes well and I'll see you in the VOD's PH1L love. Yeah, no worries. PH1L love. Oh man, the, the VOD watchers are going to be super confused at the start of this stream. What the fuck? Was anyone here hearing what happened at the start of the stream? I, I got invited Have to a day. Discord call with Ran, Tom, and Charlie, and they were just screaming at me. And I was wow. like, guys, I'm going to have to go. And then Ran said, just go live. And I was like, all right. He <laughs> <laughs> just continued to scream crazy shit at me. That was a video. A video? I don't fucking know. They just invited me. And con con continuously screamed at me to say I was in the back rooms. And then showed like a screenshot of my meet and Minecraft video telling me that's the back rooms. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, have, I still have no idea what they're doing. So, yeah. <laughs> After 1.5 years, anyway. I finally have a job. What should we doodle? Are you proud of me? Yeah, well done, mate. You're well. PH1 good job, good job. I love PH1, I love PH1, I love I miss my piss heart. What should we doodle? I found the pen I used last I time. Slay. If you're not sure what uh, type of stuff I doodle, uh, here's what we did last time. Uh, hold on. There we go. That's what we did last time. Impact. You've got like Tom's gun, Will's guitar, my hardcore hearts, Techno's crown. <laughs> and then we got like our names just hidden. I'm up here. Techno's at the top. It's like all over the place. <clears throat> that's what my, that's just what I like to do. Like to just like make shit up. I mean, two years. Thank you. Wait, I can still do it. With the scuffed setup, I can still do it. Hold on. It's like I can still hear you. What are your G's? Have fun with Thanks, your 
So I have like um, I have like a little doing good. Little you playlist that I put course. together Love you all, PH1L of love. videos and stuff that I, I just thought would be interesting. Hey Phil, PH1L love Saturday and silly. My birthday. <laughs> Can I get a birth maybe? Yeah, sure. Hold Anyways, on. Fourth. what is the name of the intro song with the remix of Remember the Name? I have like Thank four. You for streaming PH1L Wait, hold on. Hold on, let me find it. It's that time again. It is. Dada. Yes, yes. Wonderball 101. Tables turnover. In brackets, Quad City DJs versus Platinum Star Games featuring Fort Minor. Not even the two years. Twenty-four months. Has it really what are the OGs? So Thanks, man. Have found this community. <clears throat> Here is to two more years. Repeat that? No. <laughs> Hi. Hello. All right. So yeah, I can uh, I can do this. Hold on. Let me see if it still works. I love just watching you vibing. You also inspired uh, me to build large things for me and my friends in Minecraft. I guess switch to this. Seven months. Woo, PH1, and I, love you'll PH1, think nothing's love changed, PH1, but I'm in a different love. scene now, and I can do that. That's a video. Got a desk recently, so good gaming vibes now. Block game feels more fun now. Are we too small? Five months. Pog. Do I like this. That makes about that's about the right size, right? It's almost been two years, and I am very happy. I'm glad I stayed as long as I did. I got to make a lot of happy memories here, and I thank you for that. Hope you have a great rest of your day slash night. PH1L love. PH1L love. Thanks, mate. Not even the one year, thank you. Being in the Gapple Gang warms my old heart. Are they still Keep producing that wonderful content. Are you guys still monthly speaking being five months lunatics? Hope you have a great stream. PH1L love. Sorry, just figuring out what the fuck. Like their energy was way too intense. PH1L love. I... <laughs> PH1L love. They're not even responding. They're, they're way too into it, dude. They, they invited me to a group called the Backroom Boys. I don't I don't know, chat. I don't know. I scrolled up. They have just screenshots of me from my Meet a Minecrafter video. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pings asking me to join the call. Time flies, what the heck? How to play Anyways, as Dragon King in Minecraft? Everything less than three. I... <laughs> Philo MFG, it's been 12 months. <laughs> AHH, I'm so happy. <laughs> Hi, Phil. 30 oh. months is a wild ride. Hope you and Kristen are having a great oh, day. <laughs> Hello, dads are 20 months. Wow, I anyway. can't believe it. I feel like <clears throat> for not being in a lot of streams Attang. recently. I have been busy, but I love streams. Chat, you and Munza. <sighs> 22 boop, months. Boop, 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 boop. Dimension ever closer to 24. Let's go. Oh, they're watching so many Backrooms videos. <laughs> a YouTube short for... Okay, you know what? I'm not even going to... I'm not, I'm not even going to look. <clears throat> there's so much there's so much going on in that, so that group. Can I get My birthday was Sunday, but I couldn't make it to Monday stream. Fourth. Hey, I'm here. Woo, 14 months on the grind. It's doodle yes, time. Yes, how's your day going? Dad's a PH1L love, PH1L love, PH1L love. <laughs> Aereo 7x2 dads are you can try doodling many time crows then a very tired crow father in the center see i'm not good at like character stuff yippee i'm just good at doing doing the patterns i'm a basic basic boy i like i like doing patterns and things dad so are you going to draw fiddies no <laughs> that's already been done by you know capable artists <coughs> Uh, let's see. Let's get like a reference image of a crow, I guess. I could do a crow. Lots of people are seeing crow. Uh, crow silhouette. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This inspires me to get back into drawing. Enjoy it, but need to find time. Ah, Shutterstock, you never cease to amaze me in your immediate, immediate family, but your streams and vids fucking make me feel better. Love you less than three. Thumbnails with bloody watermarks. It's the most <laughs> wonderful season of the year. Oh wait, 
It's still <coughs> for a month. He saved Maybe this image. I'll check in next month to see if it changed. PS, do, 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 eight do, 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 months do. Let me right click save as. OMG 20 oh. months. I hope you are oh. well. I am running out of things to say in these. Till the next one and do the thing. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Love you, Dadza. All right, save that. Uh, load it up. Hi, it's a little window. I'm going through a rough time right now because my dog passed mm -hmm. away. I'm really mm -hmm. glad you're live mm -hmm. PH1L. Love PH1L. Love PH1L. Minimize this. Move this over. <coughs> All right. Now I have a crew image. Huge pog. <laughs> Are we good? I can like turn down the music now and we can probably load up a video. And I'll just do like a little bit of doodling whilst we watch interesting videos. Sound good? I should get a pencil. Get a pencil. Got my little eraser. Boop, 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 boop. Eh. All right, cool. Uh, let me do this. And hey, let me Dad, turn this down. Sir, I just wanted to say your streams are really the only thing keeping me going. down. So I wanted to say thank bop, you bop, for bop, just bop, bop. simply going live. I am in a very rough place and I need to have the comfort that is <clears> in <throat> streams. Thank oh, you no worries, for mate. everything, PH1L love. <coughs> yeah. Let me two refresh years. this. Oh, thank you for the two years. Now that I think Ooh. about it. I've grown a lot thanks to this community. What are you with Jeez? I hope you, Mumzo and Chat are doing well. Enjoy my money, PH1L. Salute PH1L. Pet the chat. <laughs> thanks, mate. 27 months. Wow, that's insane. Be now, be now, Happy be now, stream, be now, be now. Gonna go back to doing homework. Good job. Good do, do the thing. Okay, let me just get this image loaded months. over here. Wow. So I can see what the fuck I'm doing. Watch space videos. PH1 yeah, well, actually, shape. so in this playlist, I have one, two, three, four specific space videos that we can watch from uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson on Happy his YouTube. Woman's Day. Tell me, Wham. Phil, based on the beautiful and inspirational women <laughs> in your life, who would win in a fight? Kristen or your mum? I mean, my mom is tiny. Months, Punk. Glad I could catch she is stream. so small. You've Shout met her. The Lavender Gang and Stardust Square. Ian, you've Hello, met my mom. Monza. I am late, but I am here. Happy 19 months. She's small. Hang on, let me see. Okay. I'm just going to pause the music now. And we should be able to do this Finally now. Finally able to catch a stream. Ah. I have good news to share. I started this. keto in August and have lost 33 pounds. Oh, look. Next next video is a cat video. Too small, too loud. You probably can't hear it, can you? Oh, no, you can. Okay, so I've got it set up so that the VOD watchers you will be able to hear everything. Stadza. The VOD watchers will be able to hear this. Uh, in the early universe, you go back <coughs> to the Big Bang and you have this right. cauldron of matter and energy. Well, we don't have stars yet. We Time don't have for crow. galaxies yet. This organizing principle of stars as they well, gather into go. cities. Ph one no, L prime. It's just matter and energy, and it takes a while for the expanding universe to cool, so that matter can coalesce to make stars and ultimately galaxies. So there's a period of time after light was sent free in the universe. Because before then, it was constantly interacting with matter, and the universe was just a fog. Light gets set free once we've expanded enough. This happened another around month and another great ride in your streams. Love it. Bang. Now, light is set <laughs> free. Thanks, but okay, we don't have any objects that generate light. Okay, so in this period between 400,000 years Round and the boy. first stars, we call that the Dark Ages. There was nothing there to radiate. Yes, there was leftover light from the Big Bang, but no objects talking to us. So we calculate, we put out a best understanding of the universe for gravity, quantum physics, nuclear fusion physics, and all of this. We put on our best thinking caps and say, 
it'll take about this long. One or two 23 billion years months, Pogu, just to get two years. the stars going. Hello, folks. And then you need enough stars in a place to gather and make a galaxy. And a galaxy will have enough light for you to see from a great distance. It'd be very hard to see. I'll figure out the tail there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> That's our model of the early universe. He's quite round. He's a round boy. Now we say we don't understand... Drawing How comes while born. watching Dad's draw. My Less round. play brain is thriving so right now. Less round. The next generation space telescope after Hubble to be exquisitely tuned to show us galaxies being born. And we expect it to show us galaxies at the end of the Dark Ages. <laughs> James Webb, let's go! <laughs> objects in the universe. So, we design and build this telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope. Now, what's different about it because we'd expect galaxies that are just born to this crow does not skip like the intense amount Father, of my behavior on neuroscience ultraviolet light is the devil with no disguise because how am i supposed to secrete 2000 words of educational of gold kind of from my finger how do we see those magic i am defeated today. eating apple pops. well if that was that long ago the universe has expanded spark. that ultraviolet light is no longer ultraviolet light. No. Over the expansion of the universe, those wavelengths have been stretched. 13.8 billion years later, today, like day. ultraviolet light emitted <laughs> at the early universe has been stretched to become infrared light. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, we knew this would happen, but it's kind of, it's amazing that we can fool the universe and to say, you're not, we know you gave off ultraviolet when you're born, and we're going to look for you in the infrared. You're not going to get by us. So, we make the James Webb Spel Space Telescope. I've been watching Tabitha the long week, but still managed to hand in my essay on time. That started PH1 out as ultraviolet in the early your homework, kids. Do your homework. Bing, we turn on the telescope. Oh, by the way, infrared is also good for looking inside gas clouds that are sitting in front of our nose to see the birth of stars, otherwise cloaked in the gas clouds from which they're born. I've got a tail so, right. You can't see it with visible light because the visible light scatters and How's you can't Gus? see it. It's also hidden wish if me you're using visible light. Deadlines. Uh, uh, we didn't see Gus recently. Light, that infrared comes from I hope the he's inside. It's right cold. Out of those gas clouds. And you see where all the stars are, as well as the newborn planets in orbit around it. So the James Webb Space In awe at the size of this lad. good for months, stuff nearby. Hopefully many more to go. Just as it's good for stuff long ago. <clears throat> all right. So now, <laughs> let's tune the telescope in to galaxies being 26 born. months, Pog. And How oh are you my and gosh, are today? Who ordered Was it in Pog? Are we doing well too? We did. It was not Pog as it melted so fast and school in the dark was so ages. cold. You should draw baby zombie after the crow less than three, less than three. Nah. No idea. No Just idea. my tonsils and I'm told out. The lead Gonna watch you to get so through it. By Heart. He spit out his coffee. Mutant alerts. When he realized what kind of data he had on his hands. So I can give a list. What's the list? Either we don't understand how galaxies are formed. Of course, we don't fully understand it. That's why we built the telescope. But it's all crown. our understanding about matter and energy that tells us that there should be a dark ages, something had to change. <clears throat> We've got to go back and adjust that somehow in ways we don't know or understand yet. Or some new kind of object, unlike Darth any other Vader objects wanted we've to control seen, outer space, no but Yoda wanted to in control inner space. Or us placing it in the dark ages is somehow flawed. We're basing this on just pictures of these galaxies and what their properties are via pictures. What we are waiting for now is we want to get a spectrum of those galaxies of those objects let me not even call them galaxies because they could be something else you can tell us what chemical elements are there a rainbow is a spectrum of the sun right white light comes through goes through a raindrop out comes its component colors if you look even more carefully at it those colors reveal the chemistry of what's going on in the sun the chemical elements that are there. Sweet. You can also find out other things, like how fast is the sun rotating? All kinds of things you can find out when you get the spectrum. So, if we get the spectrum of these objects, we'll know Can't wait to what figure they're out. made of. We will oh, for us to, to figure to out, sorry. Place them in distance. <clears throat> maybe there's the something wild shit that's going on out there. <laughs> and maybe they're really on the edge of 
the Dark Ages, but somehow they're masquerading as though they're a little farther away, <laughs> deep within the Dark Ages. <laughs> Who knows? Or, as some people love to speculate, when they encounter something they don't understand, aliens. they're aliens. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> What is that? First Aliens. Thought, okay, I'm not going to stop you. But generally, we leave that for the last possible e. guess <clears throat> that we would place on something that we don't understand. And by the way, just to be fair to us, we built this telescope for this purpose, to help us understand the birth of galaxies. When you build a new telescope with access to times and places and regimes in the universe, open a new window on cosmic phenomenon, yes, it'll help you understand things you already had some idea about, but you know what else it always does? Makes discoveries you had no way to even anticipate. Yep. And that is the glory of science on the frontier. So if you see a newspaper article, say, oh, scientists have to go back and adjust their cherished theories, they have to go back to the drawing board. We're always at the drawing board because that's the fundamental feature of what it is to make discoveries in this world yep. to stand with one foot inside the circle and put a foot outside where we have yet to peer because as the area of our knowledge grows so too does the perimeter of our ignorance in your life you must learn to love the questions themselves and celebrate the unknown rather than fear it and that's what's up with that I love Neil deGrasse Tyson, dude. He's such a fucking badass motherfucker. <laughs> not only does he like just perfectly fucking explain so many things. Oh, cat video, hold on. Not only is he just like so fucking good at explaining space in like a really easy to, easy to understand manner, <clears throat> but he's so passionate. He's so fucking passionate. And like he just laughs at people when they're like, well, scientists thought they had it figured out. What now? scientist he's like well yeah that's the whole point of science dipshit you you learn <laughs> it's not like a fucking like thousand year old book that you follow to the t and never change your mind on anything we literally are changing our minds on things constantly with new information motherfuckers we're not saying we have all the answers we're just trying to figure shit out <laughs> God. Hi. Hello. You want some treats? Oh, Kitty. A big cat. This is Oslo. <laughs> he's a seven-year-old rag doll and Berman mix. Kitty. <laughs> I distracted him with some kitty gogurt, and then I trimmed his murder mittens. <laughs> Before his bath, we go from I space. Some I, out of his I set I set this playlist up to be like. Really cool video, silly video. Really cool video, cute video. Really cool video. What the fuck's this? Don't jump down, okay? So we're gonna get a few random things. Oh. Berman cats are very easygoing <clears throat> and have kind demeanors, okay. which is very similar to. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna be that. I'm gonna be that guy. Um, chat. I want to do. So this is the basic silhouette, right? I want to do like a pattern within this, but try and show like the wing. So I'm going to do a pattern that like shows the wing, a pattern that shows its eye and its beak. <clears throat> but after that, do we just kind of like fuck around? Or do I try and make these lines thicker? Like, do you think this is fine? I'm just kind of goofing around. I'm not really sure what it's going to be. <laughs> do a sword. Yeah, let's do a sword right next to the fucking crow where it can't hold it it's just floating <laughs> flowers maybe yeah we could fuck around with that i just want to like try and get this done first anyway Boop. the gentle Cat video. calm and sociable ragdoll okay let's try and not fuck this up if we fuck it up then we'll just make it but that we'll just didn't fix stop it. oslo from flying out of the tub you work that thing from his face. Hmm? Oh, kitty. Oh, ghosty. Good job, Oslo. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. 
This is my first time grooming a rag doll, and I had no idea how gigantic they were. Are you drawing yourself? You are huge. Despite him voicing his displeasure, he was quite well behaved for the blow dry. <laughs> it's so sad <clears throat> hearing the, the cats like fucking just make these noises. Like they hate it. <laughs> they are not having a good time. I brushed this Like eventually like they get to this part and they're like, yeah, whatever, but like they are not having a good time for the other part. And I'm not too sure how he felt about me shaving off his peppercorns. Okay, so we got this bit done. Okay. You can kind of get the idea of what I had. We I'm thinking. Oh, oh my god, look at him! <laughs> oh. Today, for our pet of the day, oh my god. we have 13 year old Sandy, who <laughs> and she is rocking a pretty sweet hairdo, if I do say so myself. I'm just Thank like, you look at so watching. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the Chat. I was looking down at the crew and I look up and I just see that dog. <laughs> the fucking jump scare. That's a wormhole. So Holy shit. Can understand it. Oh. If you look at space oh. and time. Right. We've Listen to wormhole explanation. 1916, when he advanced the general theory of relativity, which is the modern understanding of gravity. We learned that gravity is the curvature of space-time. Space-time, yeah. I'm convinced we fucking, like, dropped the ball on these theories, you know? I'm convinced we've, like, fucking done something. We haven't carried the two. of your space-time. Because, like, these... whatever it was that you were saying is... These fucking, um, galaxies at the edge of the universe that we're seeing with James Webb just completely fucking throws out any models we had. <laughs> about how the big bang looked at the big at the start like about 400 million years after the explosion dude <laughs> i'm i'm convinced that we have just fucked up something super important and it's just gonna click join if you see tom man fucking hell what tom my god we're just vibing chill out what Being mad what he said, Tom, we're just Tommy vibing, had, chill Tommy out. Had, Tommy had something, uh, he, wanted, Tommy had something he wanted to ask you. Tommy had something he wanted to ask you. Hello. In the back rooms. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, wait, he, oh, wait, he's in the call. Wait, Phil's in the call. Yeah, Phil's in the call. I'm literally oh, Phil, in the Phil, call. Phil, Phil, Phil Charlie Phil. needs your wife. He needs to do adultery in the back rooms. No, no, hang what? on. What? <laughs> no, he literally, it's, no, it's, it's his conscience. No, it's vital. He just needs some. All right, I just hung up on them. All right, here we go. Attracting you. And so it's an interesting, it's a different construct. From just action at a distance. You're there, I'm here, we have gravity, we pull each other, and that's it. It's a whole Good other God. thing going on. And if you think of... You thought I was kidding when I was telling you guys at the start of the stream. Fabric, right. Then you can distort the fabric with the force of gravity. Captain, so I believe there's been a distortion in the space-time continuum. Exactly. Okay. So if you, if you ask yourself, can I distort it in interesting ways that might benefit what I want to do in the universe. Wormholes. For example, I can get you around among the planets using the rockets that we've got, and I can get you there before you die, all right? Uh, so <laughs> moving around the solar system takes days to the moon, months to Mars. It'd be fucking wild if we like harness the power of wormholes, can you imagine? Planets. We're not even decades, close. You know, maybe one or two decades to <laughs> We're moon. not even close. Okay. Put that, keep that on your list. If you want to visit, but my God, stars, just sometime in the future we can do that. Wow. Every way we know to get there <laughs> exceeds the human life expectancy. So you have to find a way to shorten. Dude, we're still warring with each other. Knowing that the there's no way is not just a good idea; it's the law. Right. right. We're not that level civilization yet. To how fast you can move in that fabric of space and time. The nearest star is four light years away, at the speed of light. You watch someone go at the speed of light, it'll take them four years. To do that, you say, okay, well, let's just do that then. But right. we're nowhere near the speed of light. All right? This is, <laughs> you know, so, so it's hopeless. And that's the nearest star. Nearest. So you imagine, let's, is there a way 
maybe you can poke a hole. They still think I'm in the back rooms. Open up a hole in the fabric of space and time in a way that it's curved such that you can take a shortcut from one location to another. Nice. So imagine if you had a sheet <laughs> That, it's thank so you, Frosty, for the 39 months. Thank you, everybody, for, for the resubs, by the way, dimensions. guys. So thank you. Our universe is now a sheet. So if I take that sheet, normally I'd have to travel the full length of the sheet to get from A to B, and I want to do that before the TV commercial, okay? And so what do, do you do? That, and then you warp the space, and then this. open up a hole from one side to the other where the two places are close in this higher dimension. Right. And by doing so, you basically take this portal through, come out the other side, unfold the, the, paper, the page. And you've traveled all that distance in no time at all. It, it basically, and the no time part is, well, how, how much did you warp the space in order right. to do that? How, and if it, you warp up a lot, it can happen basically instantly, like walking through a doorway. Or if it's warped a little less, then it'll take you a little longer. But in all cases- God, can you imagine? You're Fucking effective wild. speed <laughs> is way greater than the speed of light because you basically cheated and went, right. went across the other side. Oh, we're getting the time said, travel. I'm asking myself Ooh. after I watched the movie, The Atom Project, if you really can time travel with wormholes. So Brian, we're talking about time travel and wormholes. Uh, I presume, we, I, I think everyone knows with Einstein relativity, you can travel into a future, all right? Or at least into future of where you once were so let's confine this to can you go backwards in time do wormholes enable this at all wormholes are getting increasingly interesting actually um particularly oh it's him the of black holes we can we can get onto that but um so yes uh, wormholes are allowed geometries in einstein's theory of general relativity if you just take that theory alone what do i mean by that so they really are shortcuts through space and time so you can imagine you know traveling from new york to sydney it takes a long time you go around the surface of the earth or you could tunnel through and you could get there quicker so so yes if wormholes exist right ink. and you could travel <laughs> through them and they were big enough and stable enough then you can build a time machine and um, now virtually every physicist who works on this and kit thorne actually who got the nobel prize for gravitational waves did quite a lot of interesting work on this. When you add quantum mechanics into the mix, which is the theory of everything else, because our universe hasn't just got gravity in it, it's got all sorts of other things in it as well, obviously, <coughs> electromagnetic radiation and so on, then it seems like the wormholes are inherently unstable, the big ones. And if you try to travel through one, it collapses. So that's basically, I should say, by the way, that they're part of, they're, they're such an integral part of Einstein's theory. There's a very famous paper in the 1930s by Einstein and Rosen, and they, they were called Einstein-Rosen bridges before they were wormholes. <laughs> and they're, they're built in to the basic description of a, of a black hole. If the black hole had, listed, uh, had lived forever, it's called the eternal, the maximally extended Schwarzschild metric, right? Whatever it's called. But it was, that which was discovered by Schwarzschild in 1916, just after the theory was published, then there's a wormhole in there, right? So they're just fundamental to the theory. But most physicists believe, and Stephen Hawking wrote a paper actually called The Chronology Protection Conjecture, Conjecture, oh. where he thought about this. Yeah, who knew he that, was that a rapper? They will be unstable. <laughs> yeah, chronology, chrono I can even say it, you can say it. I can't say it. Chronology Stephen Hawking dropping bars. Um, but uh, the, the, these things would not be stable and you can't travel through them so you can't build time machines. However, it's worth saying that wormholes are becoming very, very fashionable now in what's called the ER equals EPR paradigm. So Einstein Rosen, ER is Einstein Rosen, this thing from the 1930s where Einstein and Rosen noticed that they these geometries exist in space time or can exist. EPR is Einstein Podolsky and Rosen, spooky action at a distance. It's quantum entanglement. And so what now is very fashionable and looks it's one of the best explanations of how information gets out of a black hole is that this plays a role so you can there's a kind of a dual description so we've got quantum entanglement which is this spooky action at a distance thing where you separate things to large distances and they're still um linked in some way um the linked in some way is starting this to is look so five head jesus christ describe that in terms of wormholes 
microscopic wormholes mm. linking them together. Mm -hmm. But this is really, this is stuff that's been done now, 2020, 2022. So it's, um, it's on the end. Yeah, the fashion, the very fashionable thing. Okay, so wait, wait, wait let's, let's pause it's there just like, back, but all right, now you oh, yeah, this is a, this is a popular theory now. <laughs> You haven't told us how to go backwards in this time. is the most so in Brian, theory at the how moment. Wormholes to actually travel backwards in time is that possible? I Calvin Klein. Well, so yeah, if 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 they were stable, or you could stabilize them in some way, then you could use them as time machines, um, and uh, that's considered to be unlikely. Mm. Um, but it, it really is true to say that we do, well, it's very true to say we don't have what's called the quantum theory of gravity. So we don't really, in any sense, understand the, the deep merger between relativity and quantum mechanics, which you need to understand to answer that question. Mm -hmm. um, and many physicists point I out... I have to admit, it's just a giant it, hole. It feels like it's no way to build a universe. We've all seen Back to the Future. We all know the paradoxes that happen if, you, if time travel is a reality. So, so I think if you pushed most physicists and said, don't be formal about it and don't say what I just said, which is we don't understand quantum gravity yet, um, it, then most physicists would say, okay, we think the laws of nature will be such that there aren't stable, macroscopic, big wormholes. Um, that's what I think most physicists would say. Um, but Kit, actually, you mentioned interstellar, um, and Kip Thorne is one of the world experts on this, does point out that you can get around this. So you could have a universe uh, which permitted time travel and was not full of contradictions if there were no free will at all. So the whole universe itself is completely consistent and the time travel is built into the consistencies. I think Kurt Vonnegut got it right. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian. He just described your life is always there. You're always being born. You're always dying. You're always in school. You're always mm. in love. And you just rejoin where you were on that timeline and relive that. There's a Stephen Hawking's birthday party no it's kip thorne's birthday party there's a proceeding so, so neil on a when we go to scientific conferences you have a proceedings so it's a big thing and there's a proceedings for well, i think it's kip i think it's his 60th birthday party and S stephen hawking gave a, a talk and it's written up in the proceedings of his birthday party because he's so eminent and it, and stephen said um said that kip has become increasingly interested in time travel through wormholes as he's got older <laughs> That's how he started. So oh, he started the power. It's a, <laughs> Which I love. Right. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Smart person joke. <laughs> uh, the movie Monsters Inc. was all about wormholes. Did you see Monsters Inc.? You have kids. You saw Monsters Inc. I did. Several times I've seen that. Okay. The doors. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. They're manufacturing doors That's that the cool. monsters take home, and then they open the door. That is the door of the closet of the kid that you have to scare that night. That's right. Okay. And there's a big chase scene where they're going in and out of- Chat, do you know how I can tell there's a, there's a smart person joke being told in the presence of Neil deGrasse Tyson? He does the same laugh. He goes- <laughs> like he, he, <laughs> he has like a moment of where he gets it and then he laughs he like <laughs> he literally has like a moment in the factory to appreciate the smartness of the joke in, in you know in 20 different places <laughs> i've watched so many videos of with them those are wormholes so instead of a transporter <laughs> which molecularly decomposes i'm getting there you are exactly oh. right you yeah. chuck that's my next thing so my point is if you just walk through a door you walk through a door right okay that's the wormhole then the transporter in star trek which dematerializes you beams your energy oh the yeah that that to a that, location, that star trek thing kills you Right. Would be completely unnecessary. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. just pop the hatch, walk through, and now you're in the other spaceship. Now Why you're on the you... planetary surface. Why'd you have to take me apart? <laughs> exactly. Completely have you seen that? Have you seen that analysis apart. video? Completely. Yeah. Okay. Plus, uh, there was some episode I was told. Getting beamed up, you series, die. You, you're <laughs> in the later series. That there's some fraction of your molecules. The, the, that the you that was on the planet dies and, and then yeah, gets yeah, reformed well, well, that's on the knows. ship. It's yeah, wild, that's, well, dude. That's why they have the uh, buffer. It's called the transporter buffer system because of that. It compensates for that, which is why. Oh, they're, ju they're just talking about it. They're like, two of you could exist. So there's a transport buffer to make sure two of you don't exist. They do a whole episode on it where, like, 
someone gets teleported up, right? But then the person that was getting teleported up from the planet doesn't get teleported and stays there. And it's like, now there's two. It was Riker. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy, dude. I was like, whoa. So there's a teleport buffer to stop that from happening. So there's not two of you. In the later series, because I'm less complete yeah, in the later listen. series, that there's some fraction of your molecules that are not transported accurately. Constituted, yeah. Yeah, there's well, like an well, er that's, copying errors. Yeah, that's well, that's why they have the uh, buffer. It's called the transporter buffer system because of that. It compensates for that, which is why sometimes, <laughs> which is so lazy, but it, I love it. it. It works. It's like somebody gets lost, and they're just like, well, what we'll do is we'll use the transporter buffer to take all of their molecular imprint and then we'll just make them the, make bring the person back. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they don't they don't really die in a pile of goo. Right. From, right? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. All right. What's interesting there is we're in the age of information, which was not so in the 1960s. Right. And so they weren't thinking about information in the same way or at all. And so all you really need to do is make an exact copy of all the information that is contained within you, all the neurosynaptic configurations and everything, and then beam the information to another ship and then recreate you there. And then what that means is I can create you in any location and I can create multiple news. That's right. right? And I mean, why not? They do that with the with the replicator. All right. That's right. That's uh, all the replicator does. That's it, all it does. It, yeah. So in principle, if you have a replicator, you don't need a transporter system. Okay, we just have the information of who you are and transport that but so that's one thing you would do with a wormhole okay so we have monster scaring children that's the first application <laughs> second i love it otherwise how, they, otherwise how are otherwise how they going to get in your in, in gotta the have the kids Don't getting scared them. exactly another thing is imagine if the back of your refrigerator were connected to your grocer oh fuck that oh wow he stocks it the same way he stocks the shelves at the grocery at store. The, at the grocery store. They take a peek. It's oh, terrifying. You know, on lettuce. <laughs> and the lettuce is turning bad. They'll take out the lettuce, put in a fresh one. And there is no transportation network involved. Mm, say goodbye, Grubhub. The, 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 in, yeah. So Grubhub is, is a, is a practical wormhole, right? By the way, you know what else a wormhole Jewels. is? Another, is an elevator. Ooh, Think yes. about it. You walk into a room, the door closes, and then when the door reopens, you're in a completely yeah. different time and place. That's actually kind of you know you know yes that. Think about that. Yeah. Just, if, if you if before electricity and before elevators and before tall buildings, just grab someone off the street and take them into a modern elevator. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Yeah, and then would. the doors, you know, they, they're on a street level or something. What a wormhole in toilet. I'm surprised they, they haven't brought up, that up yet. hundred stories up and they'll freak out. How did that happen? The room didn't change. I didn't see anything. There are no windows. What happened? So uh, for me, an elevator is a modern sort of next best thing to a wormhole that you can come up with. Yeah. That's, right. That's... You could be in one room and then take an elevator and then there's a kitchen and another room and, and then it's a, like a living room or whatever. Yeah. You know, and and so just the world changes just in a matter of seconds. So, uh, so what do we have? So we have the elevator is a poor man's <laughs> wormhole. Yeah, we've got scaring children in their closet. We've got the transporter in Star Trek. We've got the back of your refrigerator, and what that ends up doing is completely removing the transportation sector from the world. I was going to say. What you really do, I'm home for the rest of my life. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. Mood. They didn't mention the toilet Since option. Since every galaxy we observed so far has had a supermassive black hole at the center of it, and theoretically a black hole could be turned into a worm hole. Ooh, what if they were used as save points, like in a video game across space and time for a creator of sorts to get across galaxies more quickly to create what we know as space? I think what he wants is, because black holes and wormholes are related and may be related. Okay. And he wants to know whether there's some, I, I, I might be exaggerating his question, okay. whether there's some intergalactic highway system. Yes. 
that connects one galaxy to another. Yeah. Across that, the universe. That would be right. sick. Through these black holes. Through these black holes. In other words, like it's, you know, kind of like uh What's that? What's that city? Minneapolis. Minneapolis. That's what I'm trying to think of. Yeah. So Minneapolis. Well, they have the. They have you walk. You walk. You never have to go outside. I mean, when it's 40 it's below. It's really cold. When, and when it's 40 and you just below. Walk between buildings. Right. So <laughs> yes. buildings are connected, so you never have to go outside. Yeah, exactly. So here's the thing. Nobody would live the idea more than I would. If a black hole, which only eats things, is a portal to a wormhole, the other side of that wormhole. Can't also be a black hole, right? It has because to then be you would be shoving things out. That would, that's called a white hole. Oh, really? Yes. Now, see, what white hole got to be given, and a black <laughs> hole got to be taken. So, is there really a white hole? That's a white black hole. Said that. I missed his face. That he looks so serious. That was amazing. <laughs> right. It has because to then be you would be shoving things out. That would, that's called a white hole. Oh, really? You yes. Stare at now, the camera see, like white that. White hole got to be given, and a black <laughs> hole got to be taken. <laughs> So is there really a white hole? That's a white Black Panther. That's a double reference back. The Black yes, Panther is the, the group from the oh my God. Season, right? And not the movie. That's right. Right, right. I'm and the saying. guy that uses vibranium. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So where were we? We were talking about yeah. the fact that there is something called a white hole. There. Yes. So something called a white hole and that you didn't just totally which would make be that the, up. I did not totally make it up. And this was explored in the 1970s. Okay. When the mathematics white holes are of crazy. black holes were coming to maturity, and someone pos posited, well, if you have a black hole, it What's on the other side? It would be like a white hole. I mean, I mean, why not? Right. Where everything only comes out. Right. Then how would you connect them with a wormhole? Nice. So this you got this you get three for one right. deal on that, and then you can ask yourself what a white hole would look like in the universe. Mm -hmm. So in, in 1970s, we said if this is what a white hole would look like, let's check the data. Let's let's go to the universe. Right. Nothing in the universe resembled it. Gotcha. Not even quasars, which are intense emanations of light from the distant universe in a very small volume so theoretically we, uh so we abandoned that okay so if you theoretically know, they can exist the galaxies i just don't see how you would invoke the black hole to do that. to do it that's gotcha. all. all right but great, great question we're gonna take a break you, man. Yep. before we get lost in the I'm telling you chat we're about to just get like a full fucking wipe i'm not it's gonna be nuts we're gonna have a full fucking wipe on loads of shit that we know with this, like, James Webb telescope shit. A black hole bag? Exactly. It's gonna be sick. <laughs> I hope it helps us answer, like, way more shit. I saw one, um... Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the, yep. Here's the, here's the weird video of the playlist. There's, like, multiple. His <laughs> sneeze is the best. It's coming up. It's after. It's after a scream. Just there. Watch. Wait for it. He's falling asleep. Leg. <laughs> Leg. Leg. <laughs> oh my god. More star talk. Chuck, why the emergency call to my hotline? Because we left off a place that has really put me in uh, my peak curiosity, okay. which is we were talking about how the death of stars seeds the universe with the ingredients of life, which by the way was like just incredible. What a, what a great explainer where we, you know, talk about so cool. how fusion leads to a point where we get to iron, we can't go anymore, or as I like to call it, absorption. And absorption. Then, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then, boom, we have to explode, right? Yes, yes. And But then, this is what got me. Was there an OG? I can do it now. Yep, hold on. Sweet jam. <laughs> what are the OGs? Hang on, man. When you said that, and then that is what, when 
these elements go out to the universe. I get a message off the back they rooms. They seed stellar nurseries and, you know, and they start this process again. And I'm just like, how does that even happen? Like, mm -hmm. how does the process <laughs> itself then get kickstarted, you know? Um, okay. God. So, uh, so a couple of things. Let me come into that. I think it was a video before. chat. Oh, so okay. if you take biology class and... One, I'm still confused, every though. Every biology class <laughs> will spend some amount of time trying to define life. Yes. Okay. And it's hard because we only have one example. Mm. Of it. Right. So it's it's hard to generalize what life requires if you only have one example of life. The day we find another example of life, we can throw away the things that we thought were fundamental to life that happen to apply to us and just get the basic bottom deno common denominator of the two life forms that we know about. And if we discover a third life form and a tenth life form, we can more sharply tune. So, for example, does life need liquid water? Mm -hmm. Well, we know life on Earth needs liquid water, but does all life? Maybe there's liquid ammonia uh, in another place, okay, that matters. I saw a comic where there's a crashed alien flying saucer in the desert, right? And the aliens are crawling out. Um, what's the ammonia. fucking <laughs> name? What's the name, chat, of the... There's something bears. They're like these microscopic organisms that don't need shit and they just fucking wander around. Tardigrades. Do they need water? Probably, right? Oh. <laughs> Do they need water? It's in their name. <laughs> <laughs> water bears. Fuck me, dude. There. Right. So I was thinking so like, oh, they just wander no, about, don't they? No, oh, yeah, they no, need water. Often, what's bandied about is the idea that life has a metabolism. Good job, Brian. Okay. It, it, it uses energy. It needs a source of energy so that it can use the energy. And then when it uses the energy, it has to continue to replenish the source. And life needs a way to reproduce itself. Otherwise, it wouldn't sustain. I guess something can be alive, but not ever reproduce itself. But uh, in, in the full understanding of what life means and does on Earth, it has a metabolism and can reproduce itself. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you look carefully at stars, they have a metabolism. They're born. They live out their lives. They die. And they reproduce themselves. So by... Some definitions, even many definitions of life, stars are alive. Yep. Mm. Just putting it out there. So in the respect of life itself, there is, there is a facet where stars themselves fit the definition fit the, of, fit, fit fit the some definition of those of very important important de definitions. That's correct. And the reproducing themselves is their gas clouds waiting for this enrichment that then birth a next generation of stars. So it's it's just an interesting way to think about stars relative to how we've thought about biology. Perspective, so really. It's really just perspective, chat. Make a star in the we can't, like, mm -hmm. All right. perceive... Well, first you got to get a good age. ...millions Let's of years. Because <laughs> if you sh shrink it down, world, it's the same fucking thing. <laughs> like... Correctly. You gonna have some issues. Okay, so some gas clouds have better agents than others. Okay. All right. So um, there are two broad categories of galaxy out there. One of them is elliptically shaped, mm -hmm. and we call them elliptical galaxies. Okay. And they're sort of round, and they don't have much gas at all. They ate up their gas back when the galaxy was born, leaving hardly anything left to make new generations of stars. Okay. okay. We call those elliptical galaxies. And broadly, again. Another is a very flat version of a galaxy that has spiral arms, and we call those spiral galaxies, all right? Mm, very okay. yeah. clear <laughs> and present. All right, those are very inefficient at making stars, and they're still making stars today. Okay. They're as old as the elliptical galaxies, but they're still making stars, and they still have huge repositories of gas. All right. Now, I have a gas cloud minding its own business. Okay. All right. Um, there are reasons why a gas cloud would just ha be happy to stay that way its entire life. But here's what happens. Uh, either a star blows up nearby, creating a shock wave that sh literally shocks 
the gas cloud. Okay. Or there are other sort of waves that relate to the maintenance of the spiral pattern, and they're called spiral density waves. And the point is what we have is you have gas clouds moving through a region of the galaxy that it, because of this what's called a density wave, it's compressed uh-huh. as it moves through this region before it comes out the other side. Got you. All right. Okay. And so what's an example of that? If you're in traffic and you're driving down the street. Right. And then you sort of. I love Neil's analogies. If you're a moving car <laughs> uh-huh. with its flashers on. Right. It slows everybody down. Yes. Okay. And you, right. you, and you work your way around it and come out the other side. Right. That's a density wave in the traffic. Awesome. If you see it from a helicopter, <laughs> the this guy on the right is literally me. Every time I fucking hear Neil deGrasse Dyson speak a sentence, I'm just like, uh huh. Awesome. <laughs> it's moving because the car with his flashers on is moving. It's just moving slower than everybody else. Me so for real. It's moving fast. It slows down and it merges out the other side. That is a density wave in the traffic. It's a perfect analogy to what's happening in the galaxy, except the galaxy doesn't have cars. All right, so here's what happens. If you shock the gas cloud or create a density wave that'll force some compression, little bits of it will now be denser than other regions, okay? If you're denser, you have stronger gravity near your surface than other places do. Well, I wanna get that next molecule that comes by and you're gonna attach to me you're not going to be free floating anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, all right, I just added a molecule to myself. And you didn't. With every extra molecule, I now have more gravity than I had before. Uh huh. Okay? And I start clearing out the gas cloud because even if you tried, if I started before you, I'm going to win because this is a runaway process. For all the new mass that I accumulate, based on the power of my gravity from before, I now have even more gravity. More gravity. Correct. So more gravity gets breeds more gravity. And this is a runaway process. And so when this happens, you can trigger star formation in a gas cloud. So ah. cool. And typically, there's a whole region of the cloud that starts making stars. And when you do that, you make a star cluster. Mm-hmm. All the stars with the same birthday. Boah, look at that and, fucking hell. Uh, region of the cloud that starts making stars. And when you do that, you make a star cluster. Boah. <laughs> <laughs> all roughly the same, like, age. They all just, like, fucking popped in. Spawned in. <laughs> That's fucking sick. That's so cool. All the stars with the star same clusters birthday. are fucking awesome. And uh, it's fascinating how we used star clusters to figure out how stars evolve. It, it's, it's more fascinating than it sounds like than I'm even explaining to you right now. It's just complete. It's the same thing as taking a snapshot of civilization. And all you have is a snapshot. Right. And you have to figure out, well, how are people born? And how do they die? You know, Are you born... Uh, are we born in the ground? God, he's right? so good at Shrivel, explaining things, man. Holy bring shit. bring you out of the ground, and then we feed you, and then you flesh out, and then uh, over time, do you then shrink, and then exit back into another human being? The, the time order is not obvious, because we don't have a video of this happening. We just have to, we don't live <laughs> Snapshot, long. Minecraft, snapshot. Of clusters. Snapshot, snapshot Minecraft. Of their evolution. And so that's another explainer. I'll get to that. It's Snapshot day? Very cool. But I'll just I'll give you an example. Everybody in a day goes to the bathroom some one way or another. But you don't right. spend much time there. Well, um, that, oh, that's debatable. Sorry. Debatable. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Relative to other things you do, you don't spend much time there. Okay. So a snapshot is not likely to catch you in the bathroom. Are, do only some people live in the bathroom while others don't? Or does everybody go through the bathroom? So these are questions we ask, and we answer them brilliantly in the history of this exercise. But my point is, um, this triggering of the gas clouds is what, um, this shocking of the gas clouds is what creates pockets 
of condensation, right. pockets of convergence of matter that then, as they continue, okay, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, it'll keep doing this. The native temperature of the cloud will sustain it to some level, okay? But as it gets more and more and more massive, there's greater and greater gravitational pressure on the core. There is the point where we have ignition. Got you. Thermonuclear fusion, fusion. ignition. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, <laughs> a star is born. Yep. And so that then stabilizes this against any further collapse. And it will continue to accrete. Uh, 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 like an engine starting that unless, never shuts down. <laughs> unless the star well, it does, it does but like really, really fucking far in the future. The photons that come out, they exert a pressure onto themselves. And if, you, if you're Johnny come lately to the party, you just get pushed away. And so this is a fascinating point in the evolution of a star because the high mass stars, we see them evacuating the pocket out of which they form. Yo. Oh, there are wow, these yeah. Pockets where the gas is not as dense. Because first, it had absorbed up the initial amount of gas in that pocket, and anyone who tries to make it later, it ends up getting pushed mm. away. Sorry, like sorry, blowing, a, blowing up a full. fucking bubble. Is full. No, it's, is full, it just guys. goes, <laughs> and it just, just flies down. away. <laughs> down, guys. Listen, now I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Don't worry, man. I, I saw your latest work. I, I'm a big fan. But the club is full, but, man. We got fire laws. Fucking... We got fire laws, man. Sorry, no, put your money away, bro. Put your money away. I'm serious. Oh. <laughs> and by the way, this is a decades and decades of hard-earned telescope observation, brilliant yeah. people thinking about what's going on. There's the thermodynamics of it, the quantum physics of it, the the uh, chemistry of it. There's all cool. Of this we've done the body, on. and that's why in astrophysics, mostly we, we got the legs to do next. From people of I'm not sure what I want to do with the eye yet. And that's also I think I might try and do astrophysics is. By many, myself included, like a pattern that makes it look like there is like a little little eye, like here. Ah, so you can use that as a means of going to, in as a portal to a go to portal. many different lands and. Yes. I kind of want to make this a little yes. bit closer, but I'll the do that biology, in a bit. The chemistry, the physics, the, the geology, and, the geology on the planets, and of course we send hardware out there. Like daytime. So if you're if you're an engineering geek. And love the universe. We got a place for you too. So nice. Yeah, that was, this has been my recruitment <laughs> <laughs> PSA for modern astrophysics. So anyhow, that's that's how we that's that's kind of how it's done. That's yeah. pretty cool. I I I, I yeah, love a, it. A fast addition, Chuck. Do you know when I was in high school in my chemistry class? Uh huh. I, I had asked as we learned about the periodic table. I said, "Where do all these elements come from? Well, do we find them in the Earth?" That was the answer. It would be a couple of years later when I learned, no, we made these in our stars. Right. Okay? And that, the, they were birthed in stars first and then became part of the Earth as the Earth. Isn't that fucking Earth. nuts to think about? Uh, that we are just stardust? Oh, by the way. Like, everything on Earth uh, barring a came from a star. Like, explainer, where the buck stops at iron. Yes. All right? <clears> and, and we just started making no shit with it. <laughs> And Earth's core is primarily made of iron. Mm -hmm. All of that comes from uh, the fact that once the star made iron, there it is. It's a major part of that, a major part of that uh, process. It makes the heavier elements. It can still make heavier elements. It's just not getting energy out of it, right? right. So there's a plenty of energy in a supernova explosion to keep making elements up the periodic. Looking day. at the reference image, but you're not sustaining the energy of a star by doing it. You're sucking energy from the explosion all right. and all the energy that's already available to you. Boop, 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 so, boop, boop. Man. Anyhow, that's how it works, Chuck. Some of that's, how that works. That's fascinating. I love it. I love it. It's, uh, I, I mean, it makes perfect sense. And the thing that's weird is that you have to think about these in terms of atomic terms. Like, in, while you're thinking, I'm trying to think about this, not in terms of, like, actual things fusing like lego right you know. <laughs> <laughs> legos are good that's a good fusion because yeah. you, you get them close enough then they just stick they just right? stick right but more, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. But, yeah but it's it's no like, yeah it's happening at a, at a at a 
at it in a atom- not only atomic but a nuclear a level. nuclear level. Oh, by the way, the whole universe, which was all. Really, you could put a star kind of thing in the eye. A star B equals MC squared. A five point the star. Or you mean like out of which everything would later form diamond type most thing? Most matter is hydrogen and helium. So, so you start out for free from the birth of the universe with the hydrogen. Eight pointed star. The gas clouds. They're just there for free. For free. And that's all. Wow. Yeah. Oh man, this makes me just want to go, just be there when it happens. Why, why can't we just be there? <laughs> me, the me, go. actually me, fuck's sake. I want to watch it. <laughs> I want to go see a star get be, fucking I burst. Just wanna know where it happens. <laughs> Is that the name of that song? Uh, the actual name of that song is from uh, Hamilton. It is from Hamilton. I don't know. I don't think we have enough space for the, for a star yeah, type yeah, thing. We'll it, Maybe, right. but like I kind of want to do like. Up at the universe one day. Yes. All right. Yeah, I'll show Another, you what I'm thinking. Uh, star Talk Explainer. Good to have you, Chuck. Always a pleasure. For Star Talk, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep working. That's what I'm thinking about putting in it. American fan to file BTW. Thanks for that. You're welcome. You're welcome, Ian. I was about doing like that as the eye and then like kind of just, you know, doing patterns around it. Is that red dye 40, Ian? When I saw the reports of the US government planning to investigate UAPs, I said to myself, what's a UAP? And then you- All right, this video is about UAPs, which is just another word for UFOs, essentially. Um, because the government like literally came out, uh, the American government, I should say, sorry, came out and said, "We're dev- we're we're dedicating a section uh, of of the Air Force to to discovering what the fuck is happening with the UAVs because <laughs> we keep seeing them, <laughs> and it's like just weird shit that you can't explain in the sky." Read the fine print, and it's unidentified aerial phenomena. There you go. And I said to myself, "It's the that kind of that's a bad word like for it. UFO." But regardless, whether we're talking about UFOs or UAP. What did Ian just say? Fucking your Fanta gave me asthma. <laughs> Amazing. Nice pun. Both of them refer to stuff happening in the sky and you don't know what it is. Period. Okay? We can agree on that. Because that's what the U stands for. Unidentified. If there's something in the sky that you later identify, it goes from being a UFO to an IFO, an identified flying object, and then you move on. Why should the government be interested in UFOs? Seems to me if something over our head could possibly pose a threat to us, to our safety, to our health, our economy, who are you gonna call? Call the military, the Air Force. I'm not surprised that there's military, governmental level military interest in trying to figure out what is happening in the sky mm-hmm. among objects you can't otherwise identify. No problem with that. Allocate some portion of the Pentagon budget to identifying them. People have come to equate UFOs with aliens, which is a curious equation in our brains because it goes something like this. There are lights in the sky doing something I've never seen anything do before. I can't explain it. I don't know what it is. Therefore, it's a visiting alien from another planet. So what we tend to do is explain away our ignorance. Good fucking movie, by the aliens. way. Good fucking now, movie. Just intellectually lazy. Aliens that was a really good movie. All of that. <laughs> it happens on many levels. The people who see the pyramids, and rather than credit the African culture who created them, because you don't know how somebody did it thousands of years ago, you can't figure it out, and you're not giving them the intellectual credit for having accomplished it. So you say, aliens helped them. It's a common sort of fallback <laughs> position. What I would say is... He's, he's, he's so right. Uh, the, movie, uh, the movie clip that they showed, by the way, was from Arrival. It's really good. It's about like getting visited by aliens, but there's this language barrier. We can't understand them. And the military's like, we have to blow them up. And then, you know, they bring in a, a, an actual like language professional. I forget what the name is specifically, but they have to like figure out what language they're speaking. It's super interesting. It's so cool. Um, yeah, I love how he shows the, the pyramids because so many people think the pyramids were like linguist. Yeah, professional linguist or something. Yeah. She basically like learns and un- like tries to understand 
the language that the aliens speak. It's wild. Anyway, um, yeah, he shows like the pyramids and shit, and I, I, I still think it's so funny that there's people that are like, yeah, can't, can't build that without alien help. It's like, dude, did they not just figure something out that we can't explain yet? <laughs> Dude, give us some credit, man. Holy shit. As a scientist... They probably just figured something out that we didn't fucking discover you. yet. Like, shit just fucking decays. You, uh, you encounter something you don't know nope, what it is. Nope, aliens. I want to find out more. And you don't assert that you know what it is after you've just admitted you don't know what it is. I'm going to try doodling. You don't know the what it eye. is. Let's perform more experiments. Let's get better data. Let's keep investigating it. So... I don't have any problems continuing to investigate stuff in the sky. A huge 200 foot diameter balloon at two thirds the width of a football field. It's a big ass balloon up at 60, 70,000 feet, well above the civil aviation flying zone, which is basically sea level up to about 40, 45,000 feet. Well above that, so it wasn't in anybody's way, but we didn't put it up there. Who did it? Now, there are treaties that control who gets to fly ah. over your airspace. You can't just take a plane eye. and fly over anybody's country that you choose. Not That's you, what I was thinking. At least. And so this is what made the space race of 60 years ago so interesting. Geopolitically interesting. Yeah. All right, we'll do that. Because the satellites were not flying over your airspace. They were over your space space. And there was nothing governing that. And plus, you can't maneuver satellites to go around your national borders. It doesn't work like that. The, 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 the gravitational physics doesn't allow that. So you can have satellites over people's countries. Yeah, and nothing anybody can say. You can even park a satellite over someone's country in a geostationary orbit, they're called. They orbit so far away that the time it takes them to complete one orbit around the Earth equals the time it takes Earth to make one rotation. So it appears to hover over the same location on Earth. You do that too. We've been doing this for 60 years, ever since basically the early 1960s. So balloons are kind of a budget way to try to get information from the ground, but you need permission to do that. Otherwise, you're gonna get shot out of the sky, which is exactly what Navy, was it Navy or Air Force jets did. <laughs> yeah, they the just blew the fuck up the, across the, the balloon. <laughs> Took a tour from coast to coast. Dude, I saw so many edits of this video right here missile, with like America, fuck you, <laughs> playing in the background. You really just <laughs> popping the balloon. You're popping it, and it was so fucking funny. Feels like overkill for that. Maybe we should develop a new kind of weapon. Oh god, we just for popping balloons. Uh, that would be all right. Cool, crow done. And uh, cheaper. very cool. I want to try and clean up the crown a bit more. I want it to be like sky. closer to his head. Or maybe, maybe we don't. Maybe we don't. Actually, maybe we could have shot it down over. I'll let it dry and I'll rub out the learn about pencil. Okay. You see something you don't understand. You say, "Enemy, kill it, kill it," or say, "Hmm." If I watch this, and let's say it is your enemy, I'll see what the enemy might be up to. Try to gather as much information as you can. So that's that's scientifically sensible. But could it have been carrying a payload that is dangerous? Possibly. To so get more information. Definitely. All good. And by the way, about a thousand or so weather balloons, between 500 and a thousand weather balloons, are launched every single day. So there's stuff floating in our atmosphere all the time. And they pose a danger only when they're, if they're high, they're not. But if they're lower, that's a problem. We try to monitor that. What's good about a weather balloon? You, it goes up and you can bring it back down and it, it sends you back data. But we have satellites now. So weather balloons are not as critical as they once were, given how many satellites we have monitoring the conditions on Earth. So, uh, what do we have now? We have some other floaties coming in. You know, I don't see why the, this will ever end. Uh, <laughs> but it'd be nice if we had a good military response to it. Ideally, you find a way to capture floaties. it without harming it. Then if it's some interesting technology, you reverse engineer it or the like. Some of these, we couldn't figure out what it was. I think the military said, we don't know what they are. We shot them down and it's scattered over a forest or the tundra or the frozen in the winter. We got to find out. And people heard the government doesn't know what it is. Whether or not they do know, they said they don't know. And there again, it was, it must be aliens. 
Aliens. If aliens had a, a spaceship that crossed the galaxy and came to Earth, and all they're gonna do is put a few balloons out in the atmosphere? Really? That's their highest tech thing they've got? I kind of was hoping for a higher tech. Aliens, we might encounter. <laughs> I think it's important to resist. Imagine, Earth. imagine if it was actually just that like just because we don't. Have that that was balloons, actually yet, alien activity. There must be aliens from another. A fucking planet. balloon. Carl Sagan laid it out simply. So funny. By saying extraordinary claims requires extraordinary evidence, and that's not. It's a pretty simple edict to follow. And so yeah, yes, I'm not Carl worried Sagan. getting invaded by aliens. If we were, you wouldn't need navy pilots or congressional hearings to establish this. We've got six billion smartphones in the world. We can <laughs> crowdsource any possible alien invasion. And th those videos would be viral overnight. Maybe not as viral as cat videos, but <laughs> alien spacecraft like coming, the it'll is. be up there, okay? And then we don't have to go to Congress to get them. I don't know if I want that, anything else. Whether it's this all right. is actually happening. And that's what's up with that. Neil deGrasse Tyson here, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up. I can do my nails now, I guess. Bam, 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 bam. I'm waiting for the TNT to go off, and then I go in. Ah, yes. Another another small, short go, video go, of go, funnies. Go, go, go. Are you kidding me? Are you actually... Okay. Frequently asked questions time. <laughs> uh, Technoblade, did you just kill yourself with a bed immediately after entering the end? After three hours of grinding in front of 23,000 live viewers? Oh, OBS answer, glitch. No, of course not. Technoblade never dies. This is a graphical bug with OBS. Oh, look, I'm back. First try in the chat. The chat said it. And as we all know, everything the chat says is true. That's the one thing I've learned in this playthrough. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is your Daily Dose of Internet. Uh, brilliant. <laughs> Get out of the fucking boat! Dude just jumped into it. <laughs> fucking hell. My man said, fuck this, I'll jump it. Dives into the wave. That must have hurt so much. Oh my god. Alright, hold on chat. I'm gonna go to the toilet. BRB. <clears throat> Una momento. I'll unmute alerts if you want to just entertain yourselves. Eep. <laughs> <laughs> Burner time. Wow, 27 months already. That's nuts. You know what to do. Thanks for the twenty months, mate. Oh God. I didn't take long, did it? Uh, so like this. Stop! Jesus. <laughs> I'm in 18 months. Uh, I'll mute alerts in a second. So, I'm in three and a half years. Holy fucking shit. I just pointed up. I pointed up, not at you. There you are. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks for three and a half years, mate. Thank you. I get your as well for the... Was that 10 gifted? Thank you so much. Day on Saturday, but I can't make it for Friday. Can I get my mum's a both now? Fourth. <laughs> Hang on, mate. Wow, my first Twitch baby. 
Couldn't right. have a better crow godfather. Shot. Less than three. We have a few different colors to choose from. Uh, ooh, hold on. <laughs> Whoa, that was a big hiccup. Boop. 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 I think that's purple. Uh, and then wherever the fuck this is, and then another black, I guess, and then a top coat. Uh, I think this one's black too. I'm not quite sure. Fuck it. Uh, okay, hold on. I've like put them off the screen. Give me a second. I'm gonna get some tissue. Ready to go. So we have a uh, black. Not a black, but it's like a better black. <laughs> don't don't ask me why. I just know it is. It's just better. Red. Uh, yellow. That looks fucked. That looks a little bit crusty. Some of these might be scuffed, so we might have to like swap them out. Uh, pink. That looks a little bit dry. I'm not sure about that one either. Uh, fucking dark blue. I guess. Uh, I don't know about that. Green. And then this. Yeah, it's black as well. I've got like three blacks. Purple? Should we do black and purple? Hi, and this one. Sir. I just started college recently. Are you proud? Yeah, congrats. Hopefully you do well. Baby, now. Yes, <laughs> also hope you and mums are having a good day. Less than three. <coughs> I Orange months. for MCC. <laughs> Thanks for the vibes, Phil and chat. Phil, what's your favorite piece of advice from Pitbull Senpai? Um, that every day is a good day. Every day above ground is a good day. Remember that. He's had bad times. Been there, done that. Green? Eh. Black and purple, and then orange accent for the for for a nail accent nail like ah. Whoa. <laughs> Alright, whatever. We'll just. Whoa, way too dang. Oh my god. Is that nobody was hurt? That was so loud. My fucking ears. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, look at him. Little the guy. The streamer was trying to sneak up on this deer without scaring it. It knows. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh oh. Purple's. If I pour this water out, Purple's not opening. Will it freeze? <sighs> or. Just. Well, here we go. Oh! Look at that! It's your time! Purple's not opening. Oh, my hand. I guess we're. Bidet people now. Uno reverse. What do you think of that? Okay, you want to try that one? I'll try. That's not purple. Is it not purple? It looks purple. No. Here's that's how fast more the like speed of light gray. is when going around the earth. Gray? Gray violet. I have actual. And between the earth and the moon. Bring purple. Black's fine. Different. This is what it looks eh. like when a cat has short yeah. spikes oh, and bends. Oh yeah, look at that. That's good. good day. Ph one L love. <laughs> Why do you tighten them so much? <laughs> because they leak. <laughs> so tight. And also, maybe a great white shark came right know. up to maybe this the kayak. Oh, there we what, go. I got it. I I'm strong. I would so totally strong. fuck up your mom. <laughs> <laughs> She's so small. <laughs> Twenty-six one, months. That one. Hope you're having an amazing Ooh. day, Dads and Mums. This poor little has never had a single thought in his lots life. Of love. Boop, 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 boop. That's the end of this video. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed, <laughs> and I'll see yeah, you guys yeah, soon. Later. All right, Spartan. Let's talk about taxes like we're battling the Covenant. <laughs>
Hello Dad, so tomorrow is Womb Evacuation Day. Could I have like a board to statement. celebrate smile? Shut up, Master Chief's talking about taxes. Borth. ...and receipts with the same attention to detail as when we're looking you got for runner artifacts. Yeah. Crazy. Don't leave any stone unturned or the tax man will catch you like a grunt in a trap. Oh. Next, you must determine your filing status. Are you single like a lone UNSC Marine on a mission? <laughs> or married like a couple of hunters bound together? <laughs> the status you choose will have a significant impact on your tax rate. So choose wisely, Spartan. Okay, Master Chief. Then, you calculate your taxable income. <laughs> this is the amount of your earnings that the government will tax you on. It's just like when we're taking out enemy infantry, one by one, with precision and focus. After that, you must determine your tax liability. This is the amount of money you owe to the government. There are deductions and credits available to you. But don't try to cheat, or the IRS will come after you like the flood. Finally, you must file your taxes. You can do it online or by mail, but make sure it's done right and on time, or you'll be in more trouble than a Spartan caught without their armor. Remember, oh my the God. UNSC doesn't tolerate lateness, and neither does the IRS. So there you have it, Spartan. Thank you, Master That's Chief. That's how you handle your taxes like a true hero. Just think of it as another battle to fight and a mission to complete, and you'll come out on top. Now go out there and make me proud, Spartan. I will. It's difficult day with the mic in my face. guys we did it one million subscribers i am now officially a big boy and it didn't even take that long i mean it just took like 11 days and, and nine months and five years but who's counting now that i'm famous the first order of business is to let it immediately go to my head if you have less subscribers than dan tdm don't even speak to me hidden. now that i'm hidden one million subscribers i think it'd be cool to take a look back at my history on youtube nobody cares techno show us your elbow look look i'm getting to it i made my first youtube channel when i was 10 years old and it was called studio lore i'd upload these terrible roblox machinimas back then i had no mic and recorded with whatever free program i could get my hands on which always had some terrible watermark on the <laughs> <laughs> Unregistered hypercam to the classic dude. Seconds at a time, and after all that was done, I'd throw all the clips into Windows Live mm. Movie Maker and trim them a bit before calling. Oh, it's not focused on my hand. Hold on, let me. The amount of work I put into my videos today, where I just I throw some clips into into Sony Vegas and then and then I trim them. And then sometimes I zoom in. But eventually I got bored of making bad Roblox videos and decided to move on to making bad Team Fortress 2 videos. Now I don't want to brag, but I was pretty good at that game. And after only four years of making videos, I he's, he's, to amass he was so good. It, it's fucking but, mental. Yeah, it was kind of a big deal. At this point, I was 13 and about he was to actually middle school fucking was cracked. Thinking, hmm, at some point <laughs> in the future, I'll be an adult, and adults need to get their own food. But food. Costs money. Dispenser down, push. Uh, oh, clearly I needed to figure something out. But I mean, what what kind of job was I gonna get? All I did all day was play video games and make jokes. So one day I'm sitting there watching YouTube, and there's this dude that's just like playing video games and making jokes. And I'm like, wait a minute, he's getting paid for this. I could do that. So I did. The end. Video over. All right, there's a bit more to it than that. Now, I'd always believed that confidence was an important trait to have. It's just do like orange on my thumb, maybe. Had, but someone actually, no, I don't want to do orange. <laughs> I decided forever. So I decided I was going to do YouTube, and I was going to be absurdly confident about it. I wasn't just going to hit one million subs and call it a day, because any loser can do that. I was going to hit ten million, and then I wouldn't even be grateful. I'd be the worst person on the platform. You know, other YouTubers out there, they make milestone videos like, oh my god. When I started this channel, I, I never thought I'd get this far. Thank you all so much for the support. Weak sauce couldn't be me. Catch you making milestone videos like, you know, when I first made this channel, I thought we'd get here way faster. Hurry up, losers. Pick up the pace. Chop, chop. I mean, everyone would hate me, but hear me out here. It'd be funny. Also, so many YouTubers back then would make a huge deal out of doing face reveals, and I wanted to send them a message, okay? I wanted to tell them, this is the internet. Dude, this is three years ago. He was ahead of the fucking curve. Face. We're here for the real good. So I decided that I'd uh, promise that when I hit one million subscribers, I'd do an elbow reveal. But I knew that confidence wasn't going to be enough. If I wanted to get 10 million subscribers, there was only one game that offered even a chance. The game that was taking YouTube over 
by Storm Minecraft. I decided to ditch my Studio Lore channel, which I'm sure devastated my 48 subscribers, and move <laughs> on to a new channel. I made a few collaborative channels. Ah, oh, I wow, that's a terrible fucked it. Idea. Got some on my thumb. Channel. And on October 28th, 2013, the Technoblade channel was created. Wait, wait, was that actually was that actually my banner? Are you kidding me? No, no, turn off the camera. Avert your gaze, audience. No, no, my dignity. Now I'd been playing Minecraft on and off for a few years by this point, but I'd mostly spent my time on small faction PvP servers, which I'd join and then completely take over within a few months. I mean, I ruled those <laughs> servers with an iron fist, but I, I figured if I wanted 10 million... I love the idea of I'd need a server with more than younger techno players, just so I wondered, making hmm, people's day, like, miserable. Servers, what would happen if I joined a larger server? When it came to big Minecraft servers in North America, there were only two options. It was Mineplex, which was the largest Minecraft server in the world. <laughs> on little faction it servers. Wasn't, it was a bit smaller, but it was still doing eh, pretty good. And you know, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, because I saw Captain Sparkles on that other road, and he was doing daily Let's Plays, and I'm gonna be honest, I felt like competing with him for views when I had zero subscribers would probably prove to be an uphill battle, so yeah. <laughs> Hypixel it is. And that has made all the difference. Look at how badly Hypixel is killing the Minecraft Java Edition multiplayer scene right now. Look at this. <laughs> No one stands a chance. Oh, oh, but Technoblade, isn't this server over here doing pretty good? Wrong, it's also iPixel. I started out <laughs> recording Hunger Games videos, since those were huge back in the day. I was slowly trying to assimilate the Blitz Survival Games community into my fan base, and after six months of hard work, I'd managed to get an entire 300 subscribers. You see, getting the first thousand subscribers is the most difficult, and things aren't made any easier when your voice sounds like, Hello guys, and welcome to another episode of The Hunger Games! <laughs> <laughs> then again, there was a six-year-old who got tens of millions of views, so maybe I just suck. But things started to pick up after that. I began making these Hunger Games montages in which I'd showcase myself beating some of the top players in the community, and those were quite successful, even if I cringe looking back at them. I mean, come on. Look at the beginning of this. There's like this panning shot to the tower, and half of the map is not rendered. You cannot see half of the things you're supposed to see. <laughs> This shot is terrible. But yeah, those worked out. And a year and a half after <laughs> making my channel, I now had 14,000 subscribers. At this point, I was making actual money. I mean, not like not like a lot, but pretty good for a 15-year-old. We have the dry bit. I don't really need money for food yet. And all I do all day is obsess have a look at it. trying mm. to grow this YouTube channel. What if I use this money to buy ads? You know, those YouTube ads that play before videos? Yeah, anyone The purple's them, good. So you don't the purple's ready for top coat, but I'll add so more to, to the black, I think. In a channel trailer, and every couple of months, I'd spend all my money making sure this clip played at the start of every Minecraft YouTuber's videos. There's only two ways you can react to this video. By subscribing, or by calling the police. It was a pretty bizarre way to get subs, but hey, it worked. I mean, optimizing it required a lot of math, but... But math is my thing. I managed to optimize it to the point where I could get almost three subscribers per dollar. It was like <laughs> subbot and but with real people. It was incredible. I'd still be doing it today, honestly, if I, if it didn't suffer from diminishing returns after a while. At this point, Operation Blitz Fuck. had gone over pretty well. I mean, whenever anyone else tried to be a popular Blitz YouTuber, I'd just kill them and add them to the next montage because there can only be one. And then, in June 2015, iPixel released a new game mode. Sky Wars. Sky Wars was the most popular Doing a shit game Minecraft shit ever job. had. It had something like <sighs> 8,000 concurrent players at peak time. It single-handedly launched Hypixel's player count past Mineplex. I saw that and thought to myself, mm -hmm. free views! So I started recording Sky Wars videos, and meanwhile I'm scheming, you know, like, how am I... How am I going to take over Skywars? I got to defeat all the other YouTubers. Yeah, I'll come off later. too large for me to, like, find them in-game and kill them one by one, and eventually... I found my answer, Ranked Skywars, a new mode which had a monthly competition where only the top 10 players could get an exclusive Dragon Rider victory dance. So I got Master's Division and have been passively flexing with the dragon in every Skywars video <laughs> since. Does your Skywars I always wondered about that. Dragon? Yeah, didn't think so. Well, actually, some of them do have dragons nowadays, but we don't need to speak about that. You might be thinking, uh, Technoblade, does this flexing actually help at all? And yeah, I have absolutely no idea, but I, I have to flex, okay? It's important. You see, one time my classmate told me their little brother watched Sky Wars on YouTube, and I was like, oh my god, they might watch me! Ask them who their favorite Sky Wars <laughs> YouTuber is! And they came back the next day and said, uh, you said it was, uh, I think, acidic... 
splits and I went, no! So yeah, every other YouTuber must get flexed on. My ego demands it. I spent the next two years taking over Skywars. I got the YouTube rank, graduated from high school, and got my silver plaque on YouTube for passing 100,000 <coughs> subscribers. It was now summer of 2017 and big things were on the horizon. As I said before, I was obsessed with YouTube and part of that obsession meant stalking every single other Minecraft YouTuber on Social Blade to see which of them were succeeding and if so, why. And I found this one dude who'd gone from like zero subscribers to 90,000 in like two seconds and I thought, huh? This was Skeppy, by the way. So anyways, I stalked Skeppy on Social Blade and noticed that his sub gain was completely normal except whenever he started live streaming at which point it increased by like a thousand percent until he stopped. So I tried that myself and oh my god, did it work. What? For like a month, I was streaming like five hours per day because YouTube was just like handing you subscribers by the bucket. <laughs> this is also when I beat Minecraft Hardcore Mode with the steering wheel, which got, that, that's my most popular video. It got Legendary video. Views, so many subscribers. I went from like 150,000 subscribers to like 350,000 in like two minutes in YouTube time. It was so ridiculous. I took a gap year instead of going to college. And I, I mean, with growth like that, you, you can't do anything else. Naturally, shortly after Maybe the, one, yeah. the algorithm changed and live stream and stopped giving billions of you. subscribers, but the views remained. <laughs> I turned my focus to taking over Bed Wars Hypixel's new game, which, just like Sky Wars, completely shattered any previous player count records and had like 20,000 concurrent players. All, all I could think was free views! The way I ended up flexing in Bed Wars was actually an accident. I'd planned to get onto the leaderboard, so I played a ton with a lot of the top players in the game to get better, and one day I noticed that I'd won 200 games in a row without losing. And I thought, hmm, wait a minute, isn't the record like 350? I should go for it. So I assembled a ridiculously strong Bedwars team, and we broke that record, and then some. Hypixel gave us the challenge to get a thousand wins in a row. It was a huge story, and Admin made a website to track how close I was to a thousand wins, and we had, we had to log in and play in the middle of the night to avoid people who would, like, they, they'd be they'd be coming Snipers, after me, and they'd yeah. be prepared to snipe me with fly hacks just to prevent the dream. But the we fuck? Did it, okay? <laughs> and now it's one of the most popular videos on my channel, right behind Minecraft Story Mode, which is absolutely no business having that many views but i'll take it and then <laughs> the dark ages for my channel minecraft's popularity was starting to wear off well i mean it'd been going downhill since even before i started my channel but now yeah even i, I know really that starting to feel the effects i mean my motivation my like 10 viewers particularly consistent but now whenever i uploaded i'd actually lose subscribers instead of gaining them which really did not help so for like a year and then i died I and it boomed again <laughs> I was like, what the Fortnite fuck is happening? Over. I mean, I made like a half-hearted attempt to get into Fortnite, but I just, I just wasn't feeling it. Perfect so I sort of timing. Stayed in YouTube limbo for a year. My views not growing, but not shrinking either. And all this time, I wondered to myself, what would it have been like if I had been born a few years earlier? If I had been a YouTuber in Minecraft's prime, how far could I have gone? Would I have been Sky does Minecraft? And suddenly, a few months ago, Minecraft is back. It's popular again, and I got the answer to that question. Absolutely not. PewDiePie just came in and denied everyone. You thought he was popular before? Well, now he's literally twice as popular. Dude gets 10 million views per video. We're getting owned. This just proves my original theory that making Minecraft videos is just playing YouTube on easy mode. Still, even if I'm not number one, I'm doing pretty good. You know, Skyblock came out, which was even more ridiculously popular than Bed Wars, and right as I was starting to take that over, bam. Keem starts out here saying he's starting a Minecraft YouTuber tournament, and I'm here like, it's free real estate. And in like two months, my views per video go from like 100,000 to 1 million. It's pretty great. I'm sure that trend will continue yeah. forever. Anyways, now Techno that I'm just one dunking million, on it's every it's time. beloved years, I've covered my Minecraft every YouTuber. Time I make a real life video. <laughs> <laughs> my fans have wondered how incredible my elbows must was be fucking legendary to such effort to keep them out of the public's eye. <clears throat> now it's time to find out. <laughs> the fucking music. Okay, this ad's done. I'm just trying it. Soldier. If you've stumbled into the murky depths of tax fraud after following my <laughs> video on how to do your taxes, it's important to face the music and own up to your mistake like a true Spartan. First and foremost, you need to acknowledge that the covenant of the IRS takes tax fraud very seriously. <laughs> and it's critical that you cooperate with them throughout the process. 
ignoring the issue is not an option. We can't just stick our heads in the sand like a grunt and hope the problem goes away. <laughs> to make things right. Again, it's a different one. We saw about skilled tax professional, someone who's got the brains of a Cortana and the experience of a Sergeant Major Johnson. <laughs> They'll help you navigate the murky waters of tax law and work with the IRS to get you back on track. Now, let's talk about the consequences of tax fraud. It's not just a slap on the wrist, soldier. You could be looking at a hefty fine that'll hit your wallet harder than a fuel rod gun. Listen to Master Chief. Some time behind bars. Okay, here we go. I'm going to yeah, fuck up my right hand now. Here we go. Oh, God. Rig. Moving Wait, forward. Wait, let's try a little bit longer shit. Exercise caution when following online tutorials. Just like how we can't blindly charge into battle without a plan, we can't blindly trust everything we see on the internet. When it comes to important matters like taxes, <laughs> it's always best to seek the advice of a qualified professional. Remember, Spartan, honor, courage, and commitment extend to all areas of life, even when it comes to taxes. <laughs> so let's get this sorted out and stay on the path of righteousness like we always do. Semper Fi, soldier. <laughs> and we just have floof. Go, Floof, go. Make the kitty play. <laughs> okay, let me check and see if the left hand's dry. It is not. It is still a little bit sticky. I can always get Kristen to do the right hand. Whilst this one like solidifies. Let's go. Come on. Go, Floof, Let's go. go. So cute. Come on. I want that doormat. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Yes. Good dog. Look at that little dog. He's running. Floof times two. He's doing the grooming zoomies. <laughs> My dog used to do that too. He's After so a shower, excited. I'd like wash him, tip him, bath him, right? Head. But used the shower head and like clean him if he rolled in poop. And then after I dried him, he'd just do that, just rubbing his face. <laughs> Hello. Oh, so round. So round and fluffy. Treats for the floof. <laughs> I love how Techno Dad literally knows like something as basic as <laughs> um, dog speech. Like, heckin' good. Birds are one of the most popular playable classes in the game. <laughs> Huge number of successful builds and tons of cool strategies. Alright, I saw I saw this video. This is in my recommended. And I was like, oh, that's a perfect video to watch on stream. It's like 23 minutes. But it's just a tier list of birds. <laughs> so yeah, should we give it a watch? This playlist is very random, yes. It's still not done. We have like... Let me check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 more videos after this. That I just put in just in case. I don't think we're going to get through them all, but... We can just like load up the playlist again in another stream. However, some of these strategies have clearly been more successful than others. <laughs> so today we'll be going over the bird tier list to see which bird ranks highest. <laughs> 
but before we get into looking at specific bird builds, let's skip. do an overview of the basic attributes and special abilities oh the bird God. faction has access to, as well as a quick rundown of the history <laughs> of the bird faction. So birds are one of the newer factions. I haven't the seen this video, by the way. Roster during the latter part of the Mesozoic expansion. They began as an offshoot of the dinosaur faction that was specifically adapted to arboreal gameplay. But when the devs dropped the Cenozoic balance patch, these small avians were the only dinosaurs not to be hit by the banhammer. Fast forward to today's meta, and birds are one of the most successful factions in the game, owing this success to a handful of powerful, unique abilities, in addition to the obvious flying attribute. Oh, I'm so bad with my left hand. Deep. Now, beaks were not an entirely new ability for the reptile player base, but birds went far deeper into the beak skill tree than most dinosaurs ever had, with many bird players opting for extremely specialized beaks to give them an edge in specific scenarios. However, even the basic beak offers plenty of advantages. Is this fucking Black Ops music? Teeth does mean that they deal reduced damage with their bite attack. Birds can be far more accurate with their pecking attacks, enabling them to hit weak points or secure grabs on smaller targets, such as the thin hurt box of a snake. Beaks also offer moderate protection, potentially reducing headshot damage and nullifying imprecise counterattacks. Beaks also offer some of the best stab type damage in the game, which when <laughs> used accurately can deal massive damage on crit. Beaks are also excellent tools for dealing Wait. with parasites. In Purple fact, so good on this edge one, I think. Less dexterous players will party up with bird yeah. support players in order to have a better matchup against parasites. Bro. Feathers are also a unique and powerful trait exclusive to birds that provides excellent cold protection without causing the user to become too over encumbered to fly. Feathers also offer pretty substantial defense against crush type attacks, which is especially important to birds because of their hollow bones trait. Hollow bones are another ability meant to synergize with the flying place. Hollow bones. Now, traits. a common misconception is that bird bones are hollow in order to reduce <laughs> equipment load, but actually, they're hollow in order to let bird players fill them with air which grants them a massive boost to their maximum stamina. Without this, it'd be extremely tough for a bird to fly for any significant period of time. The trade-off, of course, is that a broken bone not only deals serious damage, but also potentially reduces the player's maximum stamina by a huge margin. So a bird player will need all of the blunt damage defense it can get. And speaking of blunt damage, the bird's lower bone density means the bird's own blunt force strikes, like wing attacks, also deal reduced damage. The top tier bird builds are the ones that can best capitalize on the strengths of their class while mitigating potential weaknesses. That about covers the basics, so let's get into the tier list. At the bottom of the tier list, we have two flightless bird builds, both with essentially the same glaring weakness. These are the Kiwi and Kakapo. Kiwis are hilariously part of the same faction as ostriches, emus, and cassowaries. Oh, that's such a joke. They opted to give up the flight ability but didn't use the extra available skill points to spec into gigantism like the rest of their squad did. The result is a build that can literally only exist on island servers where there is no active mammal player base, aka New Zealand. The Kakapo is a flightless version of the Parrot, and although Parrots are undoubtedly excellent bird builds, the flightless weakness is too glaring to ignore. Due to invasive species like rats and cats establishing a presence on island servers, both of these bird builds are seeing major declines in their player base, and I would not be surprised if they all ended up switching mains. Flight is just too strong an ability to pass up, which brings me to the next builds on my tier list. What is this video? So I see what these builds were going for. Being giant could potentially make up for the lack of my flight, God. but in practice, this didn't quite pan out. While these are technically the strongest birds in terms of base power Holy and shit. defensive stats, for their weight class, they are woefully underpowered. They're one of the few megafauna builds that can be taken down by cheetahs when they should be able to completely annihilate no! cheetahs with their powerful claws. <laughs> are you wrong? Their huge weak point presents a lot of opportunity for counterattack too. So if they ever get too bold, they're setting themselves up for a tough loss. Oh. <laughs> Lastly, the fact that they are forced to nest on the ground forces them into an even more vulnerable position than most birds, as ratite eggs are extremely valuable as loot. Objective defense is Loot. not an easy task even for high tier builds, so for ostriches, emus, and cassowaries, this is a huge hurdle. Next on the tier list, we have the hummingbird. 
This build specced purely into mobility and just about nothing else, and as a result, is the only bird build with full 360 degree movement, similar to a dragonfly. This, combined with its extremely small size, enables the hummingbird to very quickly change direction mid-flight, allowing it to easily dodge attacks and fly around obstacles. More importantly, it allows the hummingbird to access nectar, which is an extremely valuable nom, source nom, of energy nom. that's normally inaccessible to birds, since birds are usually too heavy to land on flowers and not agile enough to access nectar. <laughs> the bee. This all sounds. Oh my God! The fucking bee. Birds, since birds are usually too <laughs> heavy to land on flowers and not agile enough to access nectar mid-flight. <laughs> this all sounds great, but the hummingbird also has two very Holy serious shit. weaknesses. The first is Fucking pretty launched. obvious. They have no combat prowess at all, and any attack they fail oh. to dodge will send them right back to the character select screen. Oh! But in addition to that, the insane <laughs> energy cost of their flight ability, combined I'm with their so total hungry. lack of fat storage, means hummingbirds will run out of stamina very quickly if they can't constantly find food. To me, this is a high risk high reward strategy where the risk far outweighs the reward, so I have to place them in F tier. Damn. At the bottom of D tier, we have the Pigeon. Ah, yes, the, the Pigeon. pigeon. Build doesn't really have any critical flaws, but they're held back by mediocre stats. In particular, the Pigeon is sorely lacking in any combat-focused stat, like power or defense. <laughs> is this they a drop party? <laughs> where their excellent navigation ability grants them an extra bit of safety by nesting among high-rises in loot-rich locations. But even in cities, Pigeon players tend to be the main Jesus source Christ. of XP for higher tier predators. <laughs> Plus, if you're just looking to play a bird build that's good at looting cities, there are better that options. Pigeons are just getting fucked up in this video. Oh my god. That, that was it. build is another generally understated build. <laughs> that was it. little else to rely on. It does, however, have one of the highest intimidation oh my god. efficiency bonuses in the game. Gaining a massive buff to all intimidation checks when its eye spot feather ability is <laughs> As impressive as this ability is, the peacock's actual attacks do very little damage. So any player able to resist the turkey's being like, you want me, you want, pretty easy win. want it. The peacock's geomatic <laughs> display also blocks vision behind itself, making a, oh, yeah, it's a huge by debuff. A party attacker extremely easy. And while they can escape by flying, the feathers of a peacock are so heavy that getting airborne takes a bit longer than most birds, which can be the difference Massive between debuff. dodging or dying when under attack. Yo, he was fighting for his life. The Flamingo is a bit of an AFK class. Very minimal skill is actually required to pilot this build. They opted to spec into the filter feeding ability, meaning all they really need to do to gain experience and progress their character is pick a random spot in the lake bed and start digging around with their beak, scoring three wins against things like snails and shrimp. However, when faced with a challenge from any player anywhere near its size, this build totally falls apart. The AFK is water to impede the approach of predators in order to give them time the to escape AFK and farm, dude. However, this doesn't always work. Oh my god. Their pathetic defensive stats mean they go down in one or two hits, and their slow flight startup means that oftentimes players will have time to rush them down even when they're in the water. This is an easy build to rack up a bunch of experience with, but also a very easy build to defeat if you know their weaknesses. Ah, oh, chickens. Ah, the humble chicken. Often compared to the T-Rex to exemplify how far the dinosaur faction has gone. Wait, what? While I disagree with the implication. Wait, what was that? What was, what was that meme? Ah, the humble chicken. Often compared to the T-Rex to exemplify how... Evolution. What are you doing? Evolution, stop. <laughs> oh my god. Stop evolving, gone. stop! While I disagree with the implication, I don't disagree that chickens oh, are indeed fox. a low tier build. Little While they fox. aren't anywhere near as totally helpless as the kiwi or kakapo, they're still a barely average statted bird that lacks the ability to fly for any extended distance. And they can't do they can shit. They certainly hold their own against most similarly sized opponents. Why is he fighting? Oh, he's because of the chicks. This build faces an uphill battle against most opponents. <laughs> well, okay, I shouldn't say no unique abilities. Average honest, statted bird, true. Rate kind of backfired on them due to humans using the factory farming strategy. Oh my god, factory Next farming CTR, strategy you did not just see. The tankiest <laughs> variant of the raptor subclass. A good tank build needs to be able to accomplish no. two things. The Fast respawn rate. Denial, which vultures do quite well. A few of them can easily lock down a carcass, one of the most contested points oh, of interest shit. you'll ever see on the map. 
They can do this. Oh, this is what we called Techno's um Techno's viewers, right? Ages ago. We were like, oh yeah, they're like vultures. They just like hang about and look for scraps. And then... <laughs> Slash affectionate. We... <laughs> large size and acidic projectile attack. The other thing They have an acidic projectile attack? Fits, and this is where vultures fall short. Their oh. thick feathers easily shield them completely from smaller attacks. But because of their hollow <laughs> bones, blunt fours can easily crush their defenses. Okay, time for top coat on injured. this hand. Let's not so fuck this up. Defend a carcass from hordes of smaller scavengers. They don't have Look at the crew! towards bigger, more aggressive brawlers. The command post is now under hostile control. Crew's like, yo, you got you got some spare food? You got spare food? The woodpecker build spent the bulk of their evolution points optimizing and perfecting the peck attack, both in power and efficiency, with one goal in mind. <laughs> This music. Hit insect players through cover. Burrowing <laughs> is one of the safest, most effective ways insect players can avoid. <laughs> Ew. But the woodpecker absolutely demolishes this strategy. <laughs> one of the main advantages of this strategy is that having a powerful beak that's highly effective at drilling through wood also just means you've got a super sharp beak that's highly effective as a general purpose weapon. Mm. One of the main disadvantages of this strategy is that pecking at wood gives the woodpecker's location away alerting more powerful mm. predators to its presence while it's in the middle of pecking and is distracted. One particular woodpecker build, the Toucan, opted to spec into more bulk and an even more powerful beak, which, while less useful for attacking insects through the wood, is still extremely powerful for PvP. All in all, interesting strategy. By no means flawless, but definitely has some solid strengths. So I've been pretty hard on flightless birds up until now. So you might be surprised to see the great penguins as upper mid tier. Is that how they mid. actually fight? Oh my the god. Is, penguins actually swapped out their wings for an arguably oh. equally viable alternative, flippers, which essentially allow them to fly through the water with incredible agility. This gives them a downright broken matchup against fish. However, this yeah. strategy is pretty much only viable on servers where there are no land based predators <laughs> that penguins would still need to worry about. So if for whatever reason a few polar bears ever spawn in the Antarctic server, it's kind of game over for that entire build. <laughs> the predators they have to contend with in the water are even more dangerous, and while oh, the yeah, does lethal, help them dodge attacks, lethal the penguins. still a totally one-sided matchup. Their strategy is pretty cool and actually fairly dominant due to limited competition, but I wouldn't be surprised to see the entire penguin player base collapse if the devs ever add new DLC in the form of an Antarctic land predator, oh. or even if they just buff the land mobility of the leopard seal. Still, top of C tier is a respectable position for a flightless bird. At the bottom of the tier, say? we have the goose. I've got an entire video dedicated <laughs> to the goose. Fun fact, penguins sometimes short, forget the to pay their taxes. Solid base sets, including above average hit points. Yeah, they However, didn't. However, it's abysmal power stat. They didn't get it to rely the, the information from Master Chief. Territory. This can be unbelievably effective at times, and it's not uncommon to see top-tier predators flee an encounter that they easily could have won. Bro, what? But still, the obvious flaw in this strategy is that if the goose's opponent resists being frightened, oh. he's <laughs> wide open to a punishing counterattack. In addition, the goose's weak spot is easily exploitable by intelligent players, so careless aggression <laughs> tends to be the goose's biggest strength and biggest weakness at oh. the same time. All in all, still a surprisingly effective strategy. Geese just get fucked up. The Heron build put a huge amount of evolution points into maxing out the puncture damage it can deal with its beak, and it did so to great success. Herons have one of the highest damage pecks of any bird, and frequently one-hit their targets. Holy fuck! Even those with scale armor, like large fish and what? juvenile crocodiles. That's sick. The effectiveness of their piercing attack is amplified by their long neck, which gives their attack God, a that is fast. long range, giving their strikes an almost cobra-like flash to them. They have downright oppressive matchups against fish, amphibians, and all other small aquatic birds. Whoa, he's gone! One vulnerability they do have is that their flight ability has a lot of startup, making it a bit less reliable as an escape option if they do happen to get ambushed. Still, it's certainly not terrible. Another weakness is that their long neck presents a bit of a weak point, making lunging forward with repeated pecking attacks a bit risky if you get too predictable about it. Good players will be able to punish careless lunges quite hard. Oh my god! Yo! In high B tier, we have that the punish, Falcon, though. a raptor build that opts to defeat its opponents using speed and superior maneuvering rather than actual power. Falcons actually have a below average power stat for a raptor <laughs> and don't deal particularly high damage in close combat. <laughs> Their talons are pretty small compared to hawks, owls, and eagles. And so instead of slashing and stabbing with oh. their claws, 
Falcons actually punch with their feet to disorient or concuss Holy their target. Holy fuck, knocked them in the next the week. with their more powerful beak. In the right situation, <laughs> this can be <laughs> Finish the fight with their more powerful beak. <laughs> Toxic. <laughs> Jesus Christ. In the right situation, this can deal absolutely massive damage, enough to oh. one-shot a mid-sized target at full HP. The drawback of this strategy <laughs> is that like, Falcons these only dish are out so high good. damage when they have the time to build up speed first. This makes the Falcon a pretty poor defender for objective game modes. And means the Falcon can struggle to win fights if its first attack doesn't connect, as follow-up attacks will likely not have the same force built up as the first. Still, the burst damage potential of this build cannot be ignored, so it earns its spot. Yes, in glass high cannon. Beating. Glass cannon. Oh, songbird. This might seem like an odd inclusion to cap off B tier, but songbirds are a highly efficient build for their size. I think we're good on this chat. I think we're done. List. This is a huge group. It's a bit scuffed, but what else? Starlings, sparrows, oh, what the fuck? Parents. How did I do that? I got like a bit on my finger. <laughs> they all have relatively similar stats, oh! with extremely high agility being their core stat. Unlike many right, of the builds lower on the tier list that have difficulty getting Oh, I fucked up the little nail. Songbirds have extremely low startup Wait. on their flight move, allowing them to reposition themselves easily and quickly. Hello? This makes their approach very Dude. difficult to punish, making songbirds excellent at chipping away at defensive players. And makes them great at stealing loot from slower builds. Yoink. I fucked up the little nail. Oh. Sorry, right, the rest of it's fine, too, kind of, I guess. It rather difficult to attack a party of songbirds it's a bit scuffed. While they certainly aren't invincible, having one this, of the lower This one's fucking on scuffed. Birds, they're an often overlooked <clears> and undoubtedly successful bird build. <clears throat> Won't be at as the bad. Eight here we have the swan. After the washing. swan is essentially a goose that has the power stat to actually dead. back up its attempts to intimidate. The wing attacks that most bird players use do very... Wait, did I miss the swan? No. We're on the swan. Yeah! <laughs> At the bottom of A tier, we have the swan. The swan is essentially a goose that has the power stat to actually back up its attempts to intimidate. <laughs> the wing attacks that most bird players use do very little damage and aren't very useful aside from pushing other players around. Uh. The swan's wing attack can break bones and can crush <laughs> foes. Because of this, swans are one of the best builds at controlling important points of interest. Small animals just get fucked up. Style can result in huge territory gains. <laughs> of course, they do have the same weaknesses as geese. Let's grab its so neck, yeah. Literally. With an attack can I, chat, how many times have I said this, man? Everyone's like, oh, swans will fuck you up, Phil. You just grab the neck. I, I'm not kidding. Like, this dude literally just shows how easy it is. Geese. So Yoink. targeting the swan's neck with an attack can defuse the threat. But this is a bit riskier of a play against a swan than against This is a grabbing it. <laughs> All around, sturdy defender, definitely A tier. <laughs> Next in A tier, we have the Owl, the Avian Faction's premier oh, stealth owls assassin. Owls are wild. Game. It owes this reputation to its special ability, which allows it to fly completely silently. This makes the Owl's strikes very difficult to That's defend. That's so against, cool. As players just about never see that. Look, how, look how close While it got not to the ground. As stacked in the power department as their daytime counterparts. Owls do have quite solid base stats. While they aren't likely to one-shot high HP targets, they do have enough force behind their attacks to be able to defend themselves and their territory, even from powerful enemies. In addition to granting the Owl the silent flight perk, the Owl's thick, bushy feathers offer additional defense against attacks, enabling it to stand its ground in important objective defense scenarios. Fluffy boy. Interestingly, the silent flight perk did come at the cost of the oh. waterproof ability that most bird feathers have meaning that falling into the water or getting caught in a rainstorm can actually disable the owl's flight oh. ability. A pretty unique weakness, and certainly something that can be played around, but interesting nonetheless. Oh, fuck, here we go. In the middle of A tier, we have the eagles and hawks. Hawks and eagles follow the same basic A -tier strategy, fucking hawks, dude. builds to focus on dealing maximum damage so ridiculous. with talons. Hawks are the smaller variants of this group, and because of this, they are far Yo! more Yo! While not as powerful that as That fucking eels, catch! Oh my god, he's fucking parkouring. Better than most birds of <laughs> This makes them well-suited for rushing down players, both in open terrain and in dense, difficult to navigate Holy terrain shit. forests. Eagles, in contrast, are much more powerful, but their larger size and wider wingspan prevents them from entering dense forests. Still, <laughs> he's in just open dragging a fucking goat off a cliff. <laughs> 
dealing absolutely brutal damage with their enormous dagger-like talons. Enough to take down players in higher weight classes without oh even requiring my God. team strategy. Oh my God. These are without a doubt some of the strongest bird builds in the game for PvP. And have been for Holy some time. fucking shit! Dude! <laughs> At the top of A tier, we have the grappler tank hybrid. I can't oh. believe that's been caught on camera. That's fucking insane. <laughs> Grappling enemy players can be a highly effective takedown strategy. Oh my but god. Birds struggle with this since they can't use their wings <laughs> to grab, and since their beaks aren't always the most reliable grappling Ooh. weapons, sometimes leading to targets escaping. <laughs> the pelican's grapple is, in contrast, almost totally inescapable. And oh, it's nuts. Yeah, they, they just. You you're think. done. While this attack style Once is you're in the mouth, against game fish, over, dude. It's quite powerful against other bird, rodent, and amphibian players. Although it does have its limitations. They're insane. Look. This combined look at with that. They're actually insane. Pelicans are fucking lunatics. You just try to eat a capybara. Rodent and amphibian players. Although it does... Look, he's just like, can I eat you? <laughs> Sorry, can I just... Can you just get in get in the mouth? Can you just get in in my mouth? <laughs> like Jesus Christ! <laughs> just a little nibble. <laughs> just gonna quickly test if I can eat you or not. Oops, I can't. Never mind. Have its limitations. This combined Fucking with hell. Pelican's overall bulk <clears throat> makes it one of the most difficult birds to take down in single combat, and enables it to stand its ground against even top tiers like canines. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you who follow the channel for a while can probably guess what the top tier birds are going to be. If you oh, can, shit. that's probably a good indication that you should be subscribed. Secretary those of you bird. Wish the devs could unban the Velociraptor build. Look no further than the Secretary bird, as it has basically all the same awesome abilities and more. Hunting on foot and in pairs, they prove time and time again that striking from the sky is overrated. They can easily defeat other high tier builds such as the Cobra and Mongoose Yo. with their high damage kicks. Their stop move has extremely high accuracy, allowing Secretary Bird players Holy to score fuck, that's fast. headshots with ease. And they do all this without completely sacrificing their flight ability. If they ever find themselves outmatched, which only ever happens against builds in higher weight classes, uh, they can still reach uh, <laughs> to the sky or treat Fuck them. that, yep. <laughs> the fact that this strategy works in Africa, one of the most unforgiving servers of all time, is proof enough to me that this is the optimal raptor. These last two builds are about equally matched, both opting for the same specialization, oh, intelligence. That's so fucking funny. Saw the line and was like, nah. Build with several powerful abilities, not the least of which is their sonic shriek, which can drive away just about any player who invaded their territory, especially when cool. employed by a coordinated team. In addition, due to their prehensile beak, parrots have the highest dexterity <laughs> of any bird, putting them among the best users of the tool use ability. I knew and what he was doing the moment I saw if there was any grab that, that fucking bowl. Humans, if humans ever get their intelligence, <laughs> in the I'd bet on the parrot. I made an entire video on parrots if you're interested. So cute. But when it comes to intelligence, there's one avian build that arguably outclasses them. Oh, oh yeah. Crows and ravens also opt for a high intelligence playstyle, but with a far more extensive you, social aspect to it. While plenty of bird builds use cooperative team strats, the best corvids operate using a network effect, where knowledge is shared with a huge amount of players. Vast <laughs> network. This knowledge can include useful points of interest or even blacklists of dangerous areas or players to avoid. But even individually, Corbett's... <laughs> Dude, it did nothing! It did no damage! Vast it was so funny! This knowledge can include useful points of interest <laughs> <laughs> or even blacklists of dangerous areas or players it doesn't to avoid. Even move. But even individually, corvids have a lot going for them. With significantly higher <gasps> stealth than parrots, corvids are much better at staying out of conflict. Their pointy beaks, Look, it's you, chat, while it's not you. as useful for tool use, are a much better combat tool for dealing quick damage. Hey. It's also more useful for pressuring and poking opponents, or for provoking larger players into battle, so that they can reap the benefits of the aftermath. <laughs> Corvids are one of the best built Spot. in making use of human-made items and quickly figure out ways of abusing the system to score quick loot. All in all, <laughs> Corvids are basically what you'd get if you gave monkeys wings. Easily a top tier. Pretty bird. much. They're busted. So there you have it. The complete bird tier list. Yeah, chat, you're in fucking S tier. Look at that.
or rather as complete as I thought possible for YouTube. If I didn't do a segment on your favorite bird, please let me know in the comments. Despite being the longest video I've ever made, there were still a few birds that I cut from the <coughs> video for time's sake, or because I felt I couldn't discuss the bird properly without getting into territory that was potentially too violent for YouTube. If you're interested <laughs> yeah, in watching probably. the full director's cut version of this video, <laughs> it's available to watch on Nebula. Over the 45 months, holy shit! Built by and for creators. Actually, Nebula comes bundled for free with Curiosity Stream, another awesome streaming service and longtime sponsor of the channel. Ah, sponsors! Uh, right. Chat, should we watch one more video? I'll let you choose. Hold on. Let me the 15 months, aren't you? Do, 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 do. Oh, I fucked up these nails so much. Oh, god damn it. I always do this. I always, like, forget that they're still drying. And then, like, they get fucked up. Like, I fucked up this one. This one's fucked. The only time I do nails and I don't get any fuck ups is when I'm completely silent and spending like an hour on it watching videos. <clears throat> Techno potato wall. Motherfucker, I was. It's in my. It's not in my playlist. Dude, ch chat, stop! <laughs> stop! <laughs> uh. We've got Nakey Jakey videos, speedrunning, esports, illegally downloading music. <clears throat> and we got like Will's video on we don't play Monopoly in this video. We've got Dream versus Techno Blades analysis video that Techno did. That one? The Monopoly video is really good. <clears throat> we could do the techno one, and we could do the analysis one, and then uh, the the tech, the 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 Monopoly video, I bet. I'll do that. Alright. Deal. Uh... Last Thursday, I did a 1v1 with him for $100,000. Now, Mr. Beast has already made a video about this, and I am assuming you've watched it before this video. If you haven't, a link is in the description. Go watch it first. Now, I have a lot to say about this. You've all seen it. It was one of the most <clears throat> stressful things I have ever done in my life. I'm putting the, the stakes the, the nail just so right? high. But I'm going to save that for another day. Right now, I just want to do an analysis of the 10 fights. I want to go over them in detail, because I think in the video, you can't really see everything that happened. Hopefully, you guys are a bit more interested in PvP. PvP analysis than Mr. Beast is. Techno, what are your thoughts on the last two? <laughs> I think I was in the lead, but then at the end I gave up on the axe crit. Oh my god, this guy is the biggest nerd I've ever met. Why did I ask this question? I regret everything. So this is the first duel. It's in 1.8, which is generally considered to be my strong suit. Now, Dream actually wanted the first duel to be in 1.8, although it was decided by coin flip, but I'm thinking his reasoning was that he's done a lot of training in this mode, so he's probably thinking, like, if he can beat me in the first round, in my own game mode, I'll become super stressed and then play worse and lose by a lot. Unfortunately for him, that's my secret captain. I'm always stressed. So I throw down some banter in the <laughs> chat before the duel begins. Dream really wants me to walk over to him. And I'm just I'm just staring at him because it's not happening, dude. It's not happening. I'm content to stall and to fish and rod him because if I do this for another 45 minutes, his armor will break for me hitting him with the rod. So he goes and he gets it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that he gets the first hit because I'm just going to regen. And I'm luring him back. Now I'm doing two things here. I'm adjusting to like the ping and his strafe patterns i'm getting i'm getting in the zone but i'm also luring him to this position for a strategical reason which you'll see in a second here bam i've knocked him onto the ledge this is huge the reach you can hit people from begins at the player's eyes so when dream is a block higher than me it's much easier for me the to triangle hit than for him to hit my head because the base of a right triangle is shorter than the hypotenuse Dude, my fucking Same nails aren't dry still Fuck you sick. At PvP. <laughs> i keep, now, I keep trying to do dream things also graduated from middle school he knows about the triangle so he tries to escape but not before Oops. i get two free hits on him and then he Let hits him the bow a bit, but I don't really care because I'm just going to hit him with the bow right back and then finish him Stay off. still stream it. I can't. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. I think my rod PvP at the start could have used some more work, but overall a pretty convincing victory. And we head into the second round, which is 1.16 PvP, which Dream is more known for. Now I'm going into this thinking that the first thing I need to do is find a tree and punch it to collect wood. <laughs> but the second thing I need to do is place a tax <laughs> table now this is considered a forbidden technique in pvp circles it's actually i'm not actually allowed to explain it because 
uh, I have to get permission <laughs> to learn this technique from the Minecraft elders, so you guys are going to have to figure that one out on your own. I'm sorry, but we just can't let that knowledge get into the wrong hands. Now, we're both playing a bit cautiously here. I think 1.9 PvP, it really favors the defender, so I'm trying to get... I'm trying to get hits in before I go full on aggro, and I'm trying to use the shield because axe crits are the biggest thing in 1.9. I'm trying to use the shield to disable an axe crit and get one for free. And now at this point, I'm thinking I have a health lead. I can safely commit to the fight. And again, I get some more damage there. Now I miss I miss the crit there, which is going to be that's going to be a problem. And we start trading hits, but unfortunately, I start to stumble here towards the end, and Dream manages to pull the win and equalize it. So we head into the third round, the score no! is tied one to one, and since it's my version, I really need to win this one, otherwise things are gonna be looking really bad for me. Just like last time, there's this awkward 20 second period where we just stare at each other and rod from like 10 blocks away, but I, I don't wanna charge him there because he is the, he was on the lower half slab because again, the triangles. Now here, he I think I'm down on the health in this exchange, so I'm stalling, I'm staring at him, like, oh yeah, I'm about to shoot this guy, but really I'm just, I know he's gonna sit there and block, so I'm waiting <laughs> for my, my health to regenerate. Unfortunately, he gets the arrow there, which knocks me out another heart. Now I'm trying to escape here so I can heal up, but Dream isn't letting it happen, so I decide to head into the fight. Now I know I'm down health here. I, I have to get a free hit, so I use the bow. I get a free hit there, and now we're about equal. Say it so with me. good. Not even close. Oh my god. <clears throat> oh, Techno! That was so close! Oh my! my god. Heart. I go into the fourth round with a <laughs> two to one lead, but now we're playing on 1.16, which Dream has a lot more experience with. I can't imagine the stress levels, dude. I try to raise my shield, but accidentally uh, shear the ground or wh whatever you call this mechanic. All I know is that I <laughs> clearly did not take my ADHD medicine this morning because I immediately shear the ground and completely forget about the duel for about 10 seconds. But then I remember, oh, right, $100,000 and go back in for the kill. <laughs> now Dream and I were staring at each other. I <laughs> shear the ground a bit more. So we're staring at each other. Dream goes in, gets the first hit, and then just kind of sits there and, and lets me heal because he, he just really he just really does not want to go on the offensive. And then, oh, 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 are we going to hit each other? Oh, oh, Dream hits me again, and he's like, you know what? You know what? Never mind. I'm, I'm going to let you heal. So before I go in for the kill on 1.9, I want the enemy to make at least two mistakes. And here you see Dream's second mistake is letting me get a bunch of these axe crits for free. Of course, his first mistake was challenging me in the first place. <laughs> I know he has less health than me, so I'm going in. He's trying to escape because health regeneration is really fast in 1.9, but he's cornered. He can't get away, and I am perfectly content here to uh. just trade axe crits until one of us dies because I know that it'll be him. And I yep. take my first win in 1.16. Heading into the fifth round, I have a 3-1 to one lead, and now that I've beaten Dream in his version, he has to beat me at least once in my version before the end of the duel, or he's guaranteed... You know, you know he wouldn't tell us if he Dream won or not. a lot of his arrows at the start of the fight, and I'm not sure why, so I figure, hey, I'm just going to shoot him, but why not? But I miss. He goes in for the attack, and I get one hit, but he gets two, so he's got a little bit of a lead at this point, and I try to shoot him to just, just sort of make up for it a little bit. I try. I want to pick up this arrow here on the ground. Maybe the 43 it months, same it. Thank you. He manages to pick up the arrow before me. Get a free shot there. Another free shot, and now I'm sitting here. I'm feeling pretty confident at this point. Like, I have... I have a mild health lead. Ooh, another arrow. Now he's blocking. So wait, wait until the video came time, out. <laughs> but I don't care because I feel like at this point I have a slight health lead so I can go in for the kill. And while Ooh. it is true that I had a sl slight health lead, at the very end here, Dream gets some very good rods and manages to take back the win and make the score three to two. Now I'm going to gloss over round six, seven, and eight a bit since I think they're pretty standard. But as you can see here, it's Dream, he's using a shield a lot more than I am. He blocked the crossbow bolt earlier. I get a free hit there, but then he uses a shield to disable my hit, gets another axe crit, and I lose the round as a result. We go into no! the seventh round with the score tied 3-3, three to three, but it's 1.8, so I should win this one. I knock Dream onto the platform, but he's learned his lesson. So I, I try to get a free hit here with the, the confidence ball. in this man. I dodge the arrow, but I get the free hit while he's... While his movements is messed up, and I win the <laughs> round. I go into the eighth round with a four to three lead. Now, if I can win this duel or either of the next two, I'm guaranteed to at least tie and get fifty thousand dollars. But two of the three remaining duels, including this one, are in one point sixteen, which Dream is doing much better at. So we'll have to see. I get a free hit. Disable a shield, but he disables mine. I get another hit there, a crossbow bolt, but he crits me with the axe as I reload my crossbow. I shoot him back, but the axe crit, it does a lot more damage than the crossbow. We're trading hits here. 
I pull out my sword, but it doesn't work because swords are purely ornamental in 1.16. It's <laughs> round nine, and the score is tied four to four. If I want to win this duel, I have to win both of the remaining fights, but I'm already down to seven hearts. Fortunately, I have something that Dream doesn't, comprehensive knowledge of ancient China. In a flash of inspiration, I remember that in 227 BCE, King Zhang once escaped from his assassin by circling behind a pillar. I replicate this mid-fight and heal to full health. Fast forward a bit, Dream donates an arrow to me before we begin the final exchange. He's so oh. good. Oh, yes! And so we enter the final round. I only get one chance if I want to secure this victory, and if I want to do it, I'll have to beat Dream at his own version. I mess with the floor a bit because why not? And Dream Dream wants to fight me there, but I don't, I don't want to give him even a half slab of low ground. So I circle around the pillar. We're getting ready to fight each other here. Mess with the floor a bit more because it's just what you got to do. I get a free hit there because Dream lets go of his shield. A second hit and a crossbow to the foot. I start to go in. He's imitating King Zhang's tactics. I can't imagine how fucking stressful this part was. a good crit, though. I get the crossbow bolt, and thus we begin. Like he knows he's up. Change. Oh! <laughs> oh my... Bro, I can't believe this. <sighs> oh, I did it. Oh I did god, it. No, I did it. Oh, oh my god. god. Techno, I, congratulations. I'm genuinely... You just won $100,000. I genuinely cannot process this. And so I won the duel and finally <laughs> restored my Minecraft honor. Now, I have a lot more to say about the duel, what like led up to it, how I trained for it how I felt about it. There's, just, there's so much to talk about, but I just wanted to get an analysis of the fights out first. So the one thing I'd like to say is that Dream and I, we really don't want our fans to start attacking each other as a result of this duel. We both played very well. We don't have actual beef. It's all video games. But until the next video comes out, I'll see you next time. Oh, and one last thing. We win these! <laughs>
I'm glad that alert works. Sick. Thanks, Carol. Thank you for the five fucking years. Holy shit. Thank you, mate. It's fucking wild. Time is an actual flat circle. Someone behind the braking say, go for Jesus it. Jesus Christ. Because standing up on a roller coaster is a weird thing to do. Once they're all comfortable standing up, we'll move them behind the brake. Do, 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 and as do, a trainer, do, do, do. you will tell them when to apply and not apply brake. And from then Thanks, on, mate. it's just doing a lot of laps to get experience in different conditions. Every cycle you run is different. Eat a gapple? No. Be able to make those <laughs> If it is too windy, depending on the direction it's coming from, it will stop the train. So we keep an eye out on like the wind radar and things like that to keep a, a ballpark as well as our drivers have a pretty good idea of how that's impacting the train. Rain, we also don't run in. It makes the train go way too fast. It stresses it me out it that like slow it down. someone is it in control of the brakes. If it's too windy or something like that, we get a team of people to come up. They walk up the track. That is terrifying. How to do, and then give it a big push start to get it going, which is always a bit of fun and entertainment for all of the guests on board. Sure, this is more than 100 years old, but it needs to perform to 21st century safety standards years. and get 21st century inspections. So how does it do that? Where we run into modern safety rules, we have to negotiate with the Heritage Council and say this is the most sensitive way we can possibly achieve the result. It's a difficult balance. I mean, it's there. cool. Very, very expensive one to, to maintain. Continuous maintenance. And by no means is it off the shelf. It's, it's all I Imagine the, the training you have to do. <laughs> we have to replace like for like wherever possible. Maybe the 13 months, that thank you. We have to have the manufactured specially. It's a never ending job. So we only run two trains on the track. The first train that is dispatched is required to get halfway around the track before we dispatch the next one. Now there are four blocks defined on the track by lights. Two yeah, more room for human error, I guess. To pull the train up, that was done nigh on 20 Pigeon. years. Pigeon! Modern legislation, we had to conceive of everything that could possibly go wrong. The longer Thank you, you Florin, for the prime. Risk, the more chance has got of occurring. And there have been discussions to modernize. All right, well, that's enough of that video. No friendships have ever ended because of Monopoly. Guys, join, join me at 50 seconds. Oh, it was not possible to connect. It's a... Well, 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 you need to. We have 40 seconds. The stream is so oh, fucking no, chaotic. Oh, we have to make a new lobby. But now mine Nothing we ever did friend. together works. Oh, no. Wait, so we do... Like it never oh, like went off crazy. without a hitch. No, Something crazy, always right? broke. Oh no! It was not possible to connect to this chosen game session. Okay, it? Will, why don't you start the lobby? <laughs> oh my God, Rick from Rick and Morty. I guess there's only like two times I think oh things God. went okay. Wait, you Your NAT right. type is set to strict, so you cannot join or host. An but they were like What's a NAT more planned. <laughs> settings and try again. That's the problem with the router. Um, but you are in office, right? Wait, what? Phil, I don't have access to my router. I'm in an office block. Your office uh, banned uh, Monopoly. Oh no, it's so strict at the top! <laughs> <laughs> I knew we should have tested this. Wait, can you turn off your nap? <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, sorry to interrupt. I just want to let you guys know it's that this good video, video is sponsored by Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact. It's a good video. <laughs> no, bro, you, 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 your nat doesn't fuck with the rest of us. How about you? How about you wash yourself, right? My nat is just as good no, as your man. nat. We don't hang around with people with a nat type lower than five. Fuck. <laughs> okay, I've made a public game, Will. Okay, invite Please me. Please join before the people. Do. People preferably don't join. Okay, DJ MC is in. Welcome, <laughs> DJ. <laughs> Okay, join real quick. Yeah. <laughs> There's one slot. It's not working. Okay. <laughs> okay, I have an idea. Everyone install talisman. I'm doing what it now. Talisman. I'm installing right. talisman. Ta you can't just. What does that mean? Shut up, child. We're playing talisman. What is talisman? Get in, fuckers. One pound twenty. You know, can you gift it, me? No, no, I can't afford it. You need to buy it. Gift it, me. No, I can't afford it. You made me pay for my train ticket. I can get a six pack of talismans. Yeah, yeah, do it. Do it. Get the talisman six pack. All right, oh, but but I could get the adventure starter pack bundle for only a pound. No, no, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. You're just gonna get on talisman. Guys, they're gonna send you all a copy of talisman. Thank you. It's all right. Reimburse me. No. That's fair. 
gifts. How do I send you all some gifts? No, no, I don't. No, ta no, Tommy, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm quite rich. I've got all the talisman stuff already, man. I'm ready. I have five that Tom just immediately crumbled. We're going to do a giveaway. Two pound entry. <laughs> Techno said no, and Tom was just like, what? Are you no? ready for the talisman giveaway? <laughs> Give us a prime now, and you enter into my talisman giveaway. <laughs> Yo. Let's go to the you, you in pride, talisman, and a small sense of shame. Wait, oh, all right. I'm in. Small oh, wait, nail has been fixed. Uh, Monopoly, hold on. No, I'm gonna send you. Um, Camera doesn't know how to talisman. focus, apparently. Okay. I'm gonna schedule the delivery for tomorrow. Uh, eh. that, that's not to not I'll do it manually. <laughs> to overwhelm you. Gift message. It's now black. Techno, talisman, boy. talisman doesn't you exist on Streamlabs. A little bit scuffed, do. but it's fine. <laughs> We vibe. Oh, I can hear a sea shanty music. I can't even, I can't even make it look at talisman. You owe me. Yes, Dude. we have talisman, boys. We got Phil, talisman, talisman on the screen. I'm downloading it from my How do I turn this shit it? down? How do I turn Every this game we downloaded, right like, down. broke oh my, my PC just a little bit why, more. Why can I only adjust the music slider in Until so we got to worms. Party. Are you wife have us table? <laughs> I'm in. I, Who's this? It's Dewan. Yeah. Who the fuck's Dewan? <laughs> oh, he's gone. Dewan. He's gone. Good job. Good yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. That's why you couldn't handle this. Yeah, as soon as we got the worms, Dewan. It's like a, it was like a Dewan. crypto Dewan. miner in disguise. Dewan. Get Dewan out of here, man. You gotta get Daddy, Dewan out of Dewan, here. Please. Oh my God, Dewan's talking in chat. He says hello, where, Tommy, where? in it. You Where's can't get rid of me. Hi, Dewan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Level 49 <laughs> talisman player. Anyway, okay, okay, the slots now. Join, join. We're in. Get rid of Dewan. Kick Dewan, and then we're done. Any last words, Dewan? Wilbur, no. Just kick him. Just he's got he's got nothing of interest to say. Get rid of Dewan. Right, we're ready to go. Any alternative endings? I don't. <laughs> this is my first time booting up talisman ever. Yo! I had no idea what I was doing. I don't want to panic anyone, but Phil's a thinking. <laughs> Phil's the wizard. He's he's evil. Phil is evil aligned. <laughs> What's oh, happened? oh, there's a spanner in the works. Yeah, the, oh, know, there's two. What is <laughs> Good job, Phil. Phil. Okay, roll. <laughs> I'm rolling the dice. Click the buttons. Save the, the five months, saying. No, you can beat the shit out of him. Yeah. Beat the shit out of him. Just click okay. buttons, chat. Count the character. Do it. Beat the shit out of him. Battle. <laughs> die, bitch. Roll your die. Oh, he got a one. Is, now you should have used your fate. Oh. What's Destroyed. Wait, did I win? You can reroll. Oh! oh no! <laughs> Stand off. <laughs> oh, you you fucked up. End of turn. Oh, it's my turn. I will go to Come, the church. Back me up, Will. Back oh, no, me up. I, I can't. I, I've got. I'm, I'm beyond you. No, I arrive at the chapel. <laughs> pray by rolling a dice. I'd like to pray. pray. Bro, pray. I'd like to pray. Okay, it's back to Phil. Right. Oh, the the wrong one. Is this like D and D? Uh, no. <laughs> go to the town, Phil. Go and be evil at the town. Roll the mystic. Gain a craft. You want one craft, Phil? One. Become oh, evil. He got ignored, he got ignored by the wizard, mate. What I wouldn't do to roll a four and become good. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Did Phil get to have two turns before I got mine? Is my question. Reroll, bro. <laughs> you don't want to encounter Wife Haver the Thief. Do you want to know why? Go to the red space. It'll be funny. I steal wives. You know what? Wilbur would never betray me. I'm going to the red. Wait, what? That's not even the space. Oh, I'm fighting a sentinel who has nine strength. <laughs> Look, you can just hit the auto lose if you want. <laughs> You rolled a one, Techno. Techno, you need to roll a six, and they need to just lose. not roll to win. Well, you know what? I'm going to roll a <laughs> nine. I'll do it right now. Oh! Yeah. You should have auto lose. That's the spirit. What? Oh, you've lost a life, Techno. I don't even know what that means. Is that cannon? Yeah, you go to like, Techno, you go to the graveyard, I think. From me. What do you mean, fully? And I went to fight a. Sensible. This game was so I mean, fucking weird. Confused. It was like. Tommy's back and he's You die, but you're not clean. gone. <laughs> no, Tommy, oh, you're gonna fight the Sentinel too! <laughs> you know, that's Tino, isn't it? You're not oh, strong no. enough! Uh oh. oh I fellas, it's time oh, to auto no. lose. It's oh, time to auto lose. <laughs> Fewy. At least he auto lost. What I wouldn't do without the auto lose button. Oh, it doesn't let me visit the chapel. Sorry, oh, guys. Oh. I'm off to the woods. What? <laughs> oh, Will, I need backup. <laughs> we need backup. Oh, what the fuck? I just found the. You may only enter the Valley of Fire if you have one of that's the. That's like fabled... the fucking. That's like the fucking end game thing. How? <laughs> you get that already? What? Go on, Phil. Sorry. Your turn. Why do I keep getting two? Well, the 
Okay. Draw an adventure card, builds a Minecraft. Okay. He found a sword. Add so, to your strength. Counting down to Will's PC <laughs> kicking him off. I'm, I'm trying to buy cards. <laughs> Okay, I've selected my mule. Hit and turn an film. Extra object for. Oh, oh, sorry. Go to the chapel, yeah. Petna. Go and you won't. Select the number of lives to heal. Why would why would you go down and heal all of them? <laughs> why was that a choice? It's because it's one gold per per heal. Going to fight the screen. black knight. Well, you, you can't just fight the <laughs> Fights the sentinel again. Tommy, you can't cross the thing until you fucking have enough strength to beat the sentinel. You can talk to me. Roll a nine. <laughs> oh, you fool. I think you've lost, Tommy. We're drawing, we're drawing. But you're not drawing, he's got straight nine. <laughs> okay. Well, he's got one die. Oh, okay. How many lives roll a I nine. <laughs> like six is the highest. I got a six, can I rob Phil? No, but I can rob Tommy. All right, no, 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 no. Two Tell thieves hanging out. Here we go. Here we go. Steal Bow items. Me. Bow I, me, no. I can steal your bag of gold. Yes, what please. About my lives? Thank you. And I'm done. And I'm out of there. <laughs> Six, good. Yep. Uh, you should get away from Tommy, he'll hurt you. True, true. I won't hurt I'm you, leaving. Phil. I would never steal that sword that I really want. Draw an adventure Doing card. It. Adventure. Oh, it's a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> he will give you one spell per <laughs> visit to each good oh. character. Well, too bad you're fucking evil, Phil. Yeah, don't I find a wife yeah, in this? Does. What I happens? Does. What? Oh, fuck, he does know I, that. I, 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 I... <laughs> I've just became an it's a fever dream, dude. This fucking game. Fandom.com. Are you aware that you can use cracked Buddha bones to make magic stones? <laughs> They're only stackable by 20, though, fellas, so st stay sharp. Oh. Encounter space. Yeah, oh, speak to the I'm mystic. Gonna the mist and unlike Phil, I'm not going to get Dono walled. Check this out. Let's go. Yo, Become wait. good. Yo! Yo! <laughs> Invisibility. Oh, you just Yo. read out the spell. Thank you, Invisibility. You guys can't see me anymore. All right, my last turn. <laughs> what do you mean your last turn? What? Use a space. What? He's going to beat the game. Where are you going, going Tommy? I'm going to runes. No, Tommy, you're going to just fight the Sentinel. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't what I wanted. What is that? That was a one. You fucked up. <laughs> Dead again. I think you fucked it, mate. Here we go. Here we go. He's down to one life. And you Wilbur, turn. Him down. All right, I'm gonna fuck him up. One. <laughs> okay, I'm going to the woods. Don't. Yeah. Don't leave me here. This music is so I'm epic. I'm encountering the space. Oh, oh, potion of strength. Five. Hey, I could take on the sentinel with this. Finally, something I Come understand. Help me, help me with Big Sen. I'll, I'll help you. I need to roll a one <laughs> next turn. Sen's been strong Yo. for far too long. Oh. I found the wife. <laughs> <laughs> <That was probably right. laughs> I forgot! I'm gonna steal her. I can't believe Phil left us to go find a woman. <laughs> oh, this is a scam. How do I kill Beat the me shit out it. of him! Beat the yeah, shit out of him! Character. Do I look like a man that fucks yeah, around? Um, I've got strength. Coins falling beat out the your shit out Yes, Techno, yeah, beat yeah. the shit out of him. I care about money. Four, I get a nine. Roll a nine, roll a nine. What is that? Some cryptic shit. Bro, you did it, Techno. Techno yeah. missed me. What are you gonna do? You gonna take his life or steal from him? Take his life. Where do I hit that button? Am I click about on him. To click lose on him. Talisman. Murder him. Where's the murder button? <laughs> oh. Wyvat has been killed. Take no wins. Wait, is Wyvat? Wyvat is fucking dead. Wyvat has just fucking died. Yo. Okay. Oh. Oh. And bonk. Um. All right. I'm all F fouring. Your fire. Wait, no, Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, it says your firewall has blocked access to this server. If this was a mistake, contact your system administrator. I can't die! Right, My new game, new game, new die. game. <laughs> Everyone install Transform Ice. Bruh. The French game from 2003. <laughs> Let's do this. You can't block this one, office. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can just hear lovely music. Well, your transform ice yeah, I think crashed. transform ice like immediately <laughs> crashed when I opened it. Transform ice of you, Phil. <laughs> the game is. It in... says I'm invalid. Transform oh, ice like... is telling me I'm invalid. <laughs> oh, I've got it on my stream. It's showing up. What room are you guys in? I'm in Not Nutella in Lover's room. Oh, I'm dead. Wait, let me see if I can. Make I still a don't understand this game. Room name. Big, big. big I don't know what the goal is. Password. Oh, I've just started a game. Oh fuck, they can see that. They can see the password. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold on. Nice version. Everyone join Big Boy Swangin. I I'm playing with Goggy and Big Boy Swangin. <laughs> You're not playing with Goggy. You, uh, George Not Found is not spending his Wednesday evening playing I'm Trans. You, there is George Not Found. Join Big Boy Swangin. Oh, I wonder if I can I really um, Oh, I've got I wonder if I can switch here. the camera now since on, we're not really doing anything here. Poo -poo. Oh, 
Poopy, do everyone join the room. Poopy, where are you? Poopy, join the Poopy, where are you? Oh my god, I'm gonna switch the camera. Poopy. Oh my god! Kill him, kill him, gotta kill him, gotta kill him. Kill the mice. No, I'm the white one. Kill the mice. What do you mean you're the white one? I'm just killing them, I'm killing them all. I'm killing them all, I'm killing them. I'm killing them with my balls. No, 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 no. I'm balling them. Did you see me balling them? Oh, yes. I got the cheese. Anvil on top of the mice. Ball the mice. Oh, look at them. Get fucked. Alright, camera froze. That's a good sign, I guess. I'm trying to figure out how to join you. second. Well, I'm gonna put a box down. Everyone get on the box if you like me. Guys, my mouse passed away. <laughs> what is the point of this? To be a little cute mouse and then you... Oh. Will, but I'm overwhelmed. I much <laughs> your, preferred talisman. Your firewall has forcefully closed connection to this server. If this was an issue... <laughs> no God. way. Let me check your stream. Oh, no way. You're shitting. Next one. Next one. Next one, guys. I'm installing Worms Revolution. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm violently overwhelmed. Worms revolution, let's go. I've spent over eight pounds on games. Look, guys, it's my played. room without me in it. All right. How do I join your game? I'm on worm. Oh, God. I can't hear anything. Worms <laughs> is too loud. <laughs> I've met Gunk the worm. Customization. My worms. You're going to have three worm number Oh, Wilbur? Yeah. I'm pretty sure you just went down a slot on Twitch Tracker. No! Are you, are you called to leave the call? Oh, okay. hold on, wait, no, 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 I'm, 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 I'm hey. naming a worm <laughs> there you. right now, I can't. Oh, okay, well that will redeem, but if you go under the top... I'm alive. Screen, I'd, like, I'd like you to leave. Like, it's, it's like I'm a here. business thing, it's not like It's okay, thing. I've just made Toss Mimans. I'm still in category Transform Mice, all of my monitors yeah, I, just turned off. I just had to change. Oh. <laughs> it's, all, it's now not picking up my game either. Can we okay, switch okay, now? Hold on, let me We're ready. I'm pause. Hold on. Hold on, we can do this now because we're big five heads Twitch streamers. Oh, oh fucking Will's face covered up. <laughs> I'm ready to go invite me, invite me, invite me. Uh, my formations, been, oh god. You can tell I was 14 when I last played this game because my formation is called Yo Mama So Fat. <laughs> New chair? No, it's just a just a thing that you're not allowed to see yet that hasn't Without released. This, you would never have discovered Transform Ice. That's true. Transform Ice. <laughs> it's a game of subs. It's a new game of subs waifu. Uh, it's out now. I may have just leaked that. Oopsie daisy. I think it might still be a silhouette on the website. You have voice chat on Phil. Hello. Hello. The shirt. Hey Phil! No. Phil, how you doing, man? Is this <laughs> Is no. it still a silhouette? He's a worm. Phil sounds I like he's know. in a McDonald's toy. I don't know. <laughs> Stop. He finally leaked something. <laughs> yep. Oh my fucking Whoopsie God. doopsie. Oh. What is this game? I just died! Why so tell me, tell me, we're all worms and we want to kill each other. This yeah. fucking game, I'm convinced, is like a crypto miner in disguise. Oh, you sound too ridiculous right now. Let me tab it out. Huh. My fucking camera's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. It froze my fucking camera. Oh, yo! It wouldn't guys, let me close the game. Has blocked this application. <laughs> oh, my God. Why is your internet banning games? Like, Why can I still I hear Phil? I can still hear Phil's thing. I'm turning off this camera now. Wait, I close the worms and it's still playing the music. There's an echo. Wait, can you read me? Phil is like Jumanji, Phil. You're just trapped in worms now. You're going to be a worm forever now. All right, I'm, 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 I'm starting again. I'm, I'm definitely, I'm running my intro again, guys. See, see you in a minute. What do you mean you're starting again? See, no worms. I'll start again. I'll start. <laughs> you can hear me just suffering in the background and Tom lagging out.
I think I'm just gonna turn off my PC. Manager. I think I'm just gonna <laughs> just straight hold down the power button. Oh, turn off our PCs on three. It's the change our names. Yeah. Never speak to each yeah. other again. Yep, yeah, it's the okay, only way. Ready, it's everyone? the only way. All right. Fellas, May we be friends in the next one. Three, <laughs> two, one. I love that. I love that line out of techno at the end. So good. <laughs> is this how scuffed it is as well? It's like crunched and fucked up. You barely hear him. <laughs> I think I might quit streaming now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice. Cool. Cool. Unmute alerts. Very pog. Very cool. Okay. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Music. Yeah, who the fuck has been redeeming redemptions? End them in ear check three hours ago. Can I just take their points. Do we just take their points, chat? Do we just do it? Do we just fucking take their points? I'll fucking do it. <laughs> I'll fucking do it. I'll take their points. How much is it? How much? How much are those? And the mini check is one hundred and twenty-five thousand. One hundred twenty-five thousand. Nah, I can't do it, man. That's too mean. That's way too. Oh my god, I almost marked it as complete. <gasps> oh, oh, I almost accidentally took them. I'm so I'm so used to clicking the complete button. Oh my god! I mean, it would have been their fault. Let's be real. It <laughs> it was it would have been their fault. Okay, reject. And also a hydro check. Reject that. And give them their points back. That's the nice thing to do. Not toxic. Not toxic. Huge. All right. Well, that's the stream, pretty much, chat. Um. I don't want to fuck around in any video games for a bit because these are still drying uh, and I don't want to sit and watch videos for another two hours. Oh, Miss, thank you for the 10 gifted. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Brrr. Nice little That's chill stream. You said no to the raccoon, but there's a thing here called a white nosed Cody, basically a Mexican raccoon. Can I have it? Stop stealing animals. Pog stream, I think. Pog little stream. Nice chill stream. Here's the finished product. Boop. We did a little crow. We did we did a little crow. Little little cute crow. Add that to the pile of little art pieces I've got now. We've got this one as well. That's the one I did. This one I prepared earlier. Hello, I need to sign this. Hop, you are all well graduated. Sign it. Today, PH1 LA time to become a pharmacist. Do, 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 do. We do a little signing. Phil, Phil, please. My borth is in four days. I only get monthly privileges anyway. Love stream, love chat borth. We do a little signing. I can still feel the the nail, the nail polish is not like dried. <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> Oh so, yeah, I'll let that just dry on its own. Just chill. Anyway, thank you for coming out, chat. Appreciate the support. Um, good gods, I have some messages to read. <laughs> Charlie's like, sorry if I if 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 we like fucking derailed your stream. I was like, no, that's okay. Phil, I forgot I put a massive gun on the Brittany Shears, and I am so rich, Lamau. Oh. Thank you for the biddies. Be sure to spend those points wisely. Uh, yeah, whatever that was that the boys were doing, I chat, I, I think it's going to be a video, or it was going to be a video. Who the fuck knows if it's coming out? That shit was wild. That was all over the place. They were, like, bouncing off the walls with chaos. So, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you all there. Thanks for coming out. Uh, short stream, short little chill stream. Hopefully, it's a nice uh, stream for people to put on and just like relax to um, and doodle, doodle alongside. Very cool. Uh, yep, I'll see you all Friday for another stream. Pog, pog, pog. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, a little update as well. When I'm gone in Brighton, um, I'm more than likely going to be able to stream when I'm down there. So, I'll try and do a stream from Tom's office. Whether it's with Tom or just by myself fucking around on Origins. 
uh, or with any of the other lads. We'll see. We'll see. But I'm working on making my um, OBS setup a bit more portable so I can just take it on the USB stick and just go book and then just log in and, you know, get all the things I need. Probably have a little notepad, but yeah. Working on making it a bit more portable um, so I can at least do, I guess, smallish stream whilst I'm in Brighton filming Sorry. If you haven't subscribed to Sorry, go subscribe right now. Very Pog, very cool group channel with me, Tom, Ranbu, Wilbur and Charlie Slimesicle. Very exciting stuff. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your night, chat. I'll see you all later. I'll hit you with a funny outro. Bye!